Tryna see a check, I'ma write it up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Level up, level up. Tryna see a check, I'ma write it up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Never lose, should've had better luck. I'ma wake him up from a slumber. Money ain't nothing but a thing. And the level ain't nothing but a number. Life ain't nothing but a game. Level up, level up. Never lose, should've had better luck. Tryna see a check, I'ma write it up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Waking up, admit that he gave me a chance and I'm rolling the dice. I do it all. Living like I'm trying to go for the platinum trophy in life. Who can you call? Really nobody, so you should just follow me on your device. And know if she chilling with me, then it's bound to be chemical X and the sugar and spice. Game in the system, but game is the hobby. I'm probably cocky, but hot as wasabi. I mean, if it's beat, then you know where to find me. My kiss is ready and so is my body. You should be running and telling your posse and what's in the speakers and what's in your potty. And she trying to kick it, but this ain't karate. Just keep that shit down while I'm watching Tsunami. I ain't saying I'm a super nerd, but I told you when we got involved, my idea of a perfect date is a PlayStation and some alcohol. I was role playing on GTA. I'm a good guy, but I got it all. If the world should end, be the first to leave. But the last of us, acting naughty, dog. Level up, level up. Never lose, shoulda had better luck. Tryna see a check, I'ma write it up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Level up, level up. Tryna see a check, I'ma write it up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Never lose, shoulda had better luck. I'ma wake him up from a slumber. Money ain't nothing but a thing, and the level ain't nothing but a number. Life ain't nothing but a game. Level up, level up. Never lose, shoulda had better luck. Tryna see a check, I'ma run it up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Level up, level up. Never lose, shoulda had better luck. Tryna see a check, I'ma run it up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Level up, level up. Tryna see a check, I'ma run it up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Never lose, shoulda had better luck. I'ma wake him up from a slumber. Money ain't nothing but a thing, and the level ain't nothing but a number. Life ain't nothing but a game. Level up, level up. Never lose, shoulda had better luck. Tryna see a check, I'ma run it up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Waking up, admit that he gave me a chance and I'm rolling the dice. I do it all. Living like I'm trying to go for the platinum trophy in life. Who can you call? Really nobody, so you should just follow me on your device. And know if she chilling with me, then it's bound to be chemical X and the sugar and spice. Game in the system, but game is the hobby. I'm probably cocky, but hot as wasabi. I mean, if it's beat, then you know where to find me. My kiss is ready and so is my body. You should be running and telling your posse and what's in the speakers and what's in your potty. And she trying to kick it, but this ain't karate. Just keep that shit down while I'm watching Tsunami. I ain't saying I'm a super nerd, but I told you when we got involved, my idea of a perfect date is a PlayStation and some alcohol. I was role playing on GTA. I'm a good guy, but I got it all. If the world should end, be the first to leave. But the last of us, acting naughty, dog. Level up, level up. Never lose, shoulda had better luck. Tryna see a check, I'ma write it up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Level up, level up. Tryna see a check, I'ma write it up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Never lose, shoulda had better luck. I'ma wake him up from a slumber. Money ain't nothing but a thing, and a level ain't nothing but a number. Life ain't nothing but a game. What is up, everybody? We are back for another episode of Cogs and the Machine. Before I introduce my co-host, which you should know by now. I mean, if you don't, what are you doing here? Uh, we're going to talk about Star Wars. We're going to talk about their mixed legacy. Uh, if you want to be a part of this team, level one team, it's right in front of you, level1gaming.com. You can set me a, send me a DM on Twitter. Uh, my DMs are always open. Slide into them nice and gently. That's what she said. Uh, but yeah, just come hang out with us. If you want to get some Star Wars action tonight, Humble Bundle. There is a May the Force Be With You sale, and I actually picked up three games from this today. I picked up KOTOR, KOTOR 2, and the Lego Saga, because I love Lego, and uh, they're just great games. But the whole... <laughs> Perfect games. The whole shebang pretty much is here, from classics to new games. Uh, I am an affiliate with Humble Bundle, so for full disclosure... Um, my charity of choice is the Wikipedia Foundation because we use Wikipedia insanely on this show. But 75% off on most of the games uh, for the May the 4th sale, link is in the description. Now, while I am done talking and we get to my co-host, uh, please make sure to like, this, like the stream, tweet it out, let your grandma know because she probably has some thoughts about the Star War. And uh, Trevor... Let the people know who you are, because they really should know. Uh, I'm Trevor Oz, and uh, I do uh, community and social media over at Winterborn. Uh, you can follow us there at Winterborn Games. 
uh, everywhere and check us out winterborngames.com or uh, the game we're working on Externus Path of Solari uh, which is at externusgame.com and uh, I just like to talk about video games and uh, go back into the past and and you know look at the look at the cogs in the machine so to speak of the games industry I see what you and, did there uh, <laughs> yeah so uh, it's it's a lot of fun to come back come back uh, look back in time uh, that's why I like doing this every week, and I just want to give a quick shout out uh, to the people that are here each and every week in the chat. Uh, guys like Hustle, uh, mm-hmm. and Flames, Flames, man, go to bed. What are you right. doing? <laughs> it's late where you're at. Um, and uh, I see Dallas in the chat too, and Baron, and and I appreciate you guys being with us. I uh, appreciate everybody that comes in and checks us out, uh, whether it's live or whether it's after the fact. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, what we do here is just. A lot of fun, a good way to look back at the uh, at the history of games and and kind of kind of get up, <laughs> right? Uh, and do our thing. So uh, it's a ton of fun, and it's and it's a lot of fun to have that participation along with it. So yes, it, and like Trevor said, whether you're listening to now or later, you can listen to this on Friday when Trevor posts it, where podcasts are available. And if you leave a review, we might just read it in the show. Or if you leave a comment on the level one gaming, if you come into level one originals right here, little shameless promo, uh, we, previous episode is here and you can uh, leave a little comment and we might read it out. But thank you guys, honestly. Uh, I know Baron has told me several times that we drop nuggets of knowledge. I'm like, we just talked for four hours. What are you talking about? <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. What yeah, it was funny. About. It was funny, our last episode, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit this into one thing to put on. Uh, I, I figured it out, but it was... I don't know uh, how you did it, but you, you pulled some black magic and did it. Uh, I used uh, I used science, science tree and, uh, and wizard. Switch! And that's, you know, I used my magic powers of the internet. So, um. <laughs> so while Trevor you know, works his black magic, please give, show him some love uh, because this is a show that I always wanted to do, but it takes a very like-minded person to sit and talk about things that really nobody gives a crap about unless you like gaming history. So please show Trevor some love. I need it. We need it. Yeah, a, lo- a lot of people tend to want to like talk about the, like the the here and now of the day, which... Which I, I I do enjoy talking about that stuff. I, I like to I like to throw a good yarn about what's happening nowadays. But it's also <laughs> nice to remember back, especially because for me, like my the the generation I remember the most is definitely like the the towards the end of the PS2, GameCube, uh, Xbox era into the 360 mm-hmm. uh, and like the 360 PS3. So like that generation it's kind of it's it's where like the the Xbox 360 was the first console I ever got uh day 1 so wow. i think that's 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 why i remember that era so much uh so such love so yeah so and plus I, plus i was working at a GameStop and literally I, that's all i do is talk about games for 8 hours gonna, a day so we're going to do a whole episode where you Tell me your awful stories, because you had that one where you person threatened to almost kill you. Like, I just want to hear your stories. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's some interesting, interesting stuff that happens at a GameStop from time to time. He ain't never lied. <laughs> you know, could talk about you know the customer we we dubbed as Mumbles. Oh my god, um, I can't wait for that. We could so. talk about the lady that we thought may have been a ghost. Probably uh, we're still was, not sure if we're a thousand percent. So, Trevor, so, for those that don't know, give a brief summary of Star Wars and kind of like how the movies isn't the only lore out there because people kind of forget how massive the Star Wars mythos is. Man, that's that's a whole lot to get into. Uh, I know. I mean, it started off in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> and you see, <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, look, everybody. I think everybody has a certain time and place with Star Wars. 
everybody's starting point is going to be a little bit different, I think. Um, for me, um, my starting point is going to be the OG trilogy. Um, and I got to, I, I had the privilege of being able to see those, uh, not in their original runs in theater, but during, during the nineties, they did like George Lucas did like the remasters. Um, and those got a, a brand new run in theaters, uh, during the nineties. So I, I got to that. see them then. It was it was like right before Phantom Menace, um, because obviously that new episode was going to be everything that we wanted it to be in a Star Wars movie, and uh, it was <sighs> yeah. was going to be uh, was going to usher in Star Wars. But I, I mean, all kidding aside, like those there, there's definitely a. I think there were a ton of kids who were ushered in on the Phantom Menace too. So. Really, I think Star Wars to you will will vary depending on what generation you jumped in at. Yeah. Uh, so, so for me, I will always have more of an affinity, I think, for that original trilogy, just because that's where I jumped in at. But had I jumped in at Phantom Menace, maybe I would have more of an affinity for that trilogy. Uh, I think that's when I jumped in because I didn't see the older movies until. I was like, oh, now I want to see them because I don't remember seeing them like mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. It was the original or not the original, but the new trilogy? I guess they're old now. <laughs> well, yeah, because yeah, Phantom Menace would have been ninety nine, so yeah, that, that's that seems about right uh, for you and your young self. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> every day I every week I strive I to make school. Trevor feel old <laughs> that's my whole goal I was, in, I was in middle school at that point but uh yeah, you were <laughs> I was uh kindergarten Star Wars it, it, it hurts me so much and it's still going it'll probably never stop uh if we're honest uh, there's so much games there's so much tv so much movies and they really have only tapped a small portion of Star Wars, like a small portion of the universe. Yeah, so so really, like, Star Wars as a property, and not just the movies, is extremely complicated. Uh, because you had, you had a ton of books, a ton of comics, a ton of uh, games mm -hmm. uh, in this aspect now. Um, you have... A whole bunch of of stuff that that was canon, but is no longer canon, or that it was extended universe uh, that will never become canon. That like, there's <laughs> there's like a there's like there's a time before Disney and a I think we're back. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, OBS do what OBS do, and it do me dirty. It didn't do me clean. <laughs> Very much likes to crash. <laughs> it really does. It crashes, and I was just telling Trevor before we start uh, we start back up. It only crashes during Cogs. Never in my other streams. I don't yeah, know it's why. Yeah, so, it's such a weird thing. Um, Technology is weird. Everybody, it just doesn't does not like us you are never led uh so, so again if you're watching this i will have to upload the or download this stitch it all together and i will upload this as a video because if this is how the night is starting i have a feeling obs is not done with me yet so sorry about that it right. might crash a few more times we're gonna i'm gonna figure this out it's, it's obs otherwise trevor and i would be having uh difficulty connecting to each other and we don't so it's gonna be fun uh, yeah it's definitely an obs issue which yeah it's it's always it's always an obs issue it but really hey is. we'll, we'll get through it we will uh, uh what were we saying <laughs> uh we were talking about the complicated history that is star wars uh before disney uh after disney they're very different machines uh very. it's some of it, some of it is canon, but I mean, really, you can you can kind of just just think about them as all just stories, 
within yes. the Star Wars universe. Whether or not they they actually tie into anything doesn't really matter because uh, a lot of them are self contained anyway. That's so I never understood like the retconning of stuff because you could just write it as a it happened in somewhere far away. Yeah, or or it was like you know this is a legend. I mean, I guess that's kind of what they do now. Is like yeah. they just say like these were legends, so they may or may not have happened. Um, it's just what people think happened uh, <laughs> is is kind of essentially what they say now. Which which yeah, I think that works. Yeah. Um, and you know it. it I know some people get up up in arms about their I guess their favorite thing not being canon because everybody wants their favorite. Star Wars story to be a part of the legacy, I guess, but... I mean, um, it doesn't sound like I don't, people I don't, don't play video games. Because none of the things you won't want actually happen. <laughs> right. Uh, but I, I think... Uh, I think... You can still do a lot of cool stuff in the universe without necessarily tying it into the actual movies, so... And I think that's where... Uh, give me a sec, guys. Sorry, I'm putting tags and stuff in um can you share out also the new link because we're on a it's different now so thank you guys um and i think that's where the video games have kind of succeeded because we're there's a probably about 80 and that's a low number of star wars games because you're counting in all the shovelware games all the handheld games all the really old games um, all the ones that have been lost to time. So there's a lot of games. We're not going to get through them all. Some of them I've never heard of. But I think that's where the video no, games and, have and, been, done a better job. And honestly, there's a ton. Like, anything before the 90s, I probably haven't played myself. Yeah. Um, I think I think maybe the earliest Star Wars game that I personally remember playing is probably Super Star Wars for Super Nintendo. Yeah, that was um, a difficult game. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was still during that era where you had super difficult uh, <laughs> side-scrolling platformers, and that's basically what Star. It was an action platformer. Um, yeah, it was. It was hard. Yeah, uh, it was that difficult. Game destroyed my soul. Yeah, that was that was totally that era, though. So that's uh, very unsurprising. <laughs> I'm gonna see if we can find because that game is still beautiful. I just typed in Star Wars twice. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to have audio because I hope this, uh, when we were doing the Raven software, a lot of, or one section of it got struck by Activision for visuals. And I'm like, okay. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So this is from World of Long Plays. I like to give credit to the people whose gameplay or videos we'll be watching. So that's, that's who this is. But look at, like, this, this looks like, a more pixel, just a slightly pixelier version of like Octopath. This still holds up today. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, it, it definitely does. Um, I, I think a lot. I think you'll see a lot of stuff from the Super Nintendo era, just because I think of the art style mm -hmm. still holds up. Because uh, yep. because you know pixel graphics are still a thing that we use today, even though you're gonna see slightly better pixelated graphics because it's not actually tied to a 16-bit machine anymore. Mm -hmm. But the, it's, it's, it's still a good used art style today, whereas, you know, you look at, you know, the, the generation after that, the N64 PS1 era, and it's, like, the early 3D stuff just does not hold up as well, and it's, it's just, it's a tech issue, yeah. you know. We have so, the tech to make it look old, but make it look mm -hmm. really good and old. Yeah, whereas, like, no one really wants to go back to the uh, to the N sixty four box box graphics era, essentially. Um, yeah. Which I mean, they they looked good at the time they came out, but but it, it was very much a you look back now, it's like ooh, very dated. Ah, but that's okay. That does not hold up. But hey, you know, not everything's gonna hold up. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of there are plenty of movies and stuff you see too. Uh, that don't hold up from different eras, oh, so it's it's so just that. it's just how tech is. Um, but then but then you see movies that are timeless, and I think I think the movies that are timeless end up being the ones that used more practical effects for their stuff. Yeah, I'm a big proponent of. I know 
you guys know on the show, we kind of go off topic and we talk about all kinds of things. I'm a big proponent over practical, over digital, but if they're used in conjunction together, they can be good. Mm-hmm. Like take the thing, the thing, it's one of the scariest movies I've ever watched as a child. I don't know why I watched it. My cousin was real to me. He made me watch it. And that <laughs> movie holds up. And the remake they did, it was shot with practical, but then the studio wanted them to do reshoots and they used digital. But the stuff that was practical and digital combined still looks pretty good, although the, that movie is not as classic as the original thing. Well, if if you look to uh, just keeping it in the Star Wars family, look at The Mandalorian, which is a mixture of both. That's you know, true. Gro- all the Grogu stuff is practical um, and works well. Uh, but like a lot of the... A lot of the backgrounds and environments are done in Unreal Engine, um, which uh, is the first, which is the first time that it's been done in in film or TV, uh, which is really cool. So now we're actually seeing the the video game technology being used for stuff outside of video games, which is which is super interesting. Uh, have you ever ever seen the Watchmen behind the scenes? Uh, no, I haven't. Not the movie, but the TV show. But the TV show? The TV show, they kind of did the exact same thing. They had, uh, I don't, I probably won't be able to find it, but they had all the physical sets there, but everything that was, uh, it was just in the camera, like this kind of stuff, and they would have the actors acting in a physical set, but they would have everything on Unreal behind them and the camera was like shooting real time kind of like avatar with james cameron that's what they did i was like that's cool. really cool <laughs> yeah it makes a lot of sense though uh, and it's to- like it totally works i mean it, we're, we're to a point where that where uh Almost video game graphics one. yeah have have finally caught up to what stuff would look like in real life uh, so we're, <laughs> I was gonna say we're we're at that we're at that junction point where yeah. where it's almost where it's almost I think we're gonna get into that uncanny valley thing. Um, I think we're there. Yeah, I, I think it was an intentional design, but Resident Evil Seven, Mia, man, she was creepy. I don't know what it was. Mm-mm. I think it was an intentional, like make her eyes just a little bit too big and stuff, but. Yeah, that's why I'm so glad we've kind of hit that point because we can't go anywhere. Vi- vi- good God, visually, but the stories of these games and the gameplay has to increase and be better. Yeah, I, th- I think I think the devil will be in the details mm-hmm. uh, when it comes down to it. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think as far as where games are going, we're gonna see more stuff in the background, more. Uh, <laughs> More dynamic systems, more things happening all at the same time, like more, uh, I guess, worlds that are more lived in, that are living worlds, stuff like that. I think we'll see more of uh, with the added power, uh, whereas, you know, we're not going to see a huge graphical upgrade. We'll see, you know, we'll see like upgrades in lighting and stuff like that, uh, like with ray tracing and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, that's but I, good. yeah, but I think that'll be the the biggest thing but like even yeah if uh, you're bringing up jedi fallen order Mm -hmm. uh i mean like obviously the lead the lead actor is recognizable um you've seen like you know if you've seen shameless you know him (laughs) you know uh yeah it is and he's a great actor uh and he was he's in uh also in uh oh gotham yeah joker yeah in gotham so I mean, he's a great actor. I can't, for the life of me, thinking of his name off the top of my head. Yeah, uh-huh. can't remember. I but... just go with that cute ginger boy. <laughs> <laughs> can't remember his name. Uh, bad. now I'm, I have to look up his name because it's gonna annoy me. No, but... oh, Calcus. Yeah, I, I I was gonna say I know the character name, but. Cameron Mo- Monaghan, Mahogan. Cameron Mo- Monaghan. Monaghan. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. It, it, it's one of those names, like, I feel like I'm saying it right, 
but then there's probably some, some word is silent or something like that, and it's just like, okay, I guess, whatever. <laughs> so Star Wars. We're gonna go, you guys know I love my lists here. Uh, I only have two lists. It's a list of all the Star Wars games that we know of, because I bet you there's tons that are missing, and then the best tw uh, 25 Star Wars games. So what do you want to start with? Star Wars games, uh, the list of, or the best 25? Uh, let's let's start with uh, hmm. because this big list is is expansive. Yeah, let's let's just go with the best twenty five to start with. Uh, so you guys know uh, with the list, we are going to look at these as you know things that are just lists, not get riled up because we have looked at some lists especially like the the best last week the uh, best open world games and there was some on there that were missing and I'm like that's, that's not right. So we're going to Yeah, I, I mean I I think I think we'll always have maybe a difference of opinion on some of these lists. Yeah. Uh but you know and I think I think just in general I think that's that's why people like lists so yeah. they can either get their opinions reaffirmed or so that they can uh fight against the machine that is the list writer. Right. Uh so so, so in this case, yeah, we'll probably disagree with some stuff, but yeah. you know, really, it's it's just a way to bring up the games so that we can Talk jog our memories. <laughs> also, uh, let us know your guys' favorite Star Wars games, which games, uh, you, Star Wars games you played recently, if you can remember, and what game you kind of hated, and we'll read it. Yeah, so we'll read it through. So, so actually, before you start going through this list, I have two very important questions for you mm. uh, that will be judged harshly. I mean, our Right. Oh no, now I have to. Why? OBS is making my job hard. I turned it down, so let me know if that fixed anything, y'all. I'm. I'm did at you with the end. I think so. Yeah, I did. I'm at me with the okay. end. Okay. All right, guys. We'll uh, we'll do this. We got this. We do. We are. If it doesn't work, are, uh, next week Trevor will post. <laughs> this is the most it's crashed in such a short time, though. So I'm surprised. Yeah, it's it's weird. Uh, dang it, OBS. <gasps> anyway, mean, thank God it's a free service, so I can just be like, okay. But yeah, so I mean, it's yeah, it's not like it's something you paid for and have to, you know. Yeah. Oh. Go complain about on the internet. Uh, uh, I mean, nah. I guess you could still complain about it on the internet, but that's what I'll people do anyway. But Nah, I'm not that kind of person. But I'm about to be judged harshly, and uh, what is my judgment, and what is the, so, we'll see what the passing decision is. So the first question, and it's extremely important, mm. um, and will tell us everything mm. about your love of Star Wars, but which movie is your favorite? See, I'm like the kid, the, well, you know how old I am. It's just like a, with Bond, I'm the Pierce Bronson era. Um, I'm going to say, and this is because I've, it's really started to grow on me, as awful as it is, it's one of those good awfuls, is Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> I know, it's awful. But I also haven't watched any of the new ones, so I don't know if they'll be. But yeah, Revenge of the okay. Sith. It's right. so bad that it's become good to me because Aiden Christensen, not a great actor. Um, I, I, no, he's not. But I mean, I don't think Revenge. I think Revenge of the Sith might be the best of that trilogy. Yeah. So. I just, um, I, it's one of those cheesy, I kind of grow into love it kind of ones. 
it's yeah i i can i can get that i can get that i can get that um, if i had to choose another one and i know this is going to drive people crazy is uh Jin, the one with Jin or so rogue one like that's another one honestly um that's that's very much either my number one or number two. Um, really? I would pro. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm gonna probably go with what most people go with and say Empire, but yeah. Uh, but Rogue One is definitely up there. So um, I thought it was just, good. it's just well written and it's 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 extremely good. Better and than I don't the know solo why. movie. You know what? I didn't think the solo movie was that bad. It was just um, way cheesier than I thought it was going to be. Way cheesier and yet yeah. way more serious than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can totally get that. But I, but it was definitely, I think maybe I went in with such a low expectation <laughs> that I was surprised that it was pretty good. Yeah. Um. So I, I don't hate it. Uh. I mean, I don't think there's any Star Wars movie I actually hate. No. So even, even, even though there are definitely. Uh, contingents of the internet that hate like so many different ones uh, for different reasons, what have you. But uh, yeah, I would say my my top is probably either Empire or Rogue One, uh, and, depending on the day. Like I have only watched clips on YouTube of the newer movies. I like the visual stuff, but I just don't know um, the story wise. So it actually, yeah, uh, Hustle. It's not. It's OBS, but it's also not OBS because we. Like I was saying before the first second crash, we could stream. Uh, uh, st you stream uh, games stream. just fine, yeah. Exactly, and games are much more demanding. So I turned down the frame rate. Hopefully that's it. I don't know. Uh, what's up, pirate? How are you doing? Make sure you guys, as uh, Trevor asked me the second question, uh, to let us know your favorite Star Wars game, your favorite Star Wars movie as well, and uh, what's the last Star Wars game you guys played? Oh. Here's the, and then the next question is also a question that you have been asking of our audience. And what is your favorite Star Wars game? Oh, yeah, I've only played like out of the list we're going to go through a very small portion. Um, I haven't played Kotor in a while. I did buy it on the uh, Star Wars uh, Humble Bundle Game Pass or Humble Bundle thing, which is in the description. <laughs> Uh, it's yeah. like two bucks right now, so I bought it. Yeah. I'm gonna replay yeah, it. Yeah, I think uh, I want to say I think Steam's having the same sale right now. So yeah, yeah. Oh, four bucks, two bucks higher. Either way, um, that's still like yeah, that's still stupid cheap. <laughs> Dirt cheap. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I would say Fall in Order because I liked the gameplay and the things to it. But uh, the Star Wars MMO because it just keeps going. <laughs> okay, it just never stops. <laughs> yeah, I, I I can get behind that. But like there's so uh, many I, good I mean, games, it's so hard to choose. There is a lot of good games in the Star Wars universe. There's some that are not so good uh, yeah. as well. But I would, I, I'm, I mean, I've said before how much I love Knights of the Republic, so. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think it'll come to anybody's surprise that that is my favorite. Uh, no. But surprise, there's no. definitely there's definitely a lot of other ones that I really liked. Uh, I like Jedi Fallen Order a ton. Um, I really like uh, the first Force Unleashed. Uh, I liked a whole lot. I thought that game was really good. I think it's in uh, this. And there's time. there's a ton of others. Uh, but I figure we'll talk about them as the list goes on. So. Yes. But I figured I, I would ask you before we go through a list. Yeah, I'm not, like, big on Star Wars mythos and lore, but I do enjoy the games. And um, mm. I find the games, the games just span everything from, like, squadrons to, which is, you know, flights, not a flight sim, but, like, a dog fighter simulation to on ground stuff to playing as the clones playing as jedi it's just there's so much across the entire star wars universe that it literally hits any kind of thing you could want yeah there's a there's a good uh there's a good breadth oh. of you know they, they're they it's very expansive absolutely nice 
Uh, so Pirate uh, says that What's up, uh, Pirate? Ro- Rogue Squadron Three Rebel Strike. Uh, that's that's a good one. Uh, Star Wars Yoda's Challenge. Okay, I was about to ask. Yeah, he said it was an educational game. That one I've never played, so I'm guessing that was probably a computer educational game, um, if I were to guess. And uh, an X Wing. Uh, X Wing makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But yeah, Rogue Squadron Three was really good. I want to. Yeah, I wasn't. It's oh, actually Game on Cuba, this pack right? too. Yes, Rogue Squadron Three was because I think it was either Rogue Squadron Two. Rogue Squadron Two was on GameCube because that's like where I did my review of it. Uh, yeah, I think I want to say two and three were GameCube, and the the first, yeah, okay, it was on GameCube. Yeah, I'm gonna I show. So one of these games I've done a review on, uh, retrospective because I don't feel like you should be reviewing a 12, 15 year old game. Uh. Revenge of the Sith. Movie tie-in, you guys know that's my kink in life. I had to rebuy the disc because I just forgot how good the game was. This is actually probably one of my favorite uh, movie tie-in games of all time. Not my favorite Star Wars game. And Battle for Naboo. Uh, This was a racer. I still haven't got it running because it's from the old era of PC games that just don't want to run on anything. So Those are the only two Star Wars things I have. Yeah, I had that problem earlier today where I was like, hey, I'm going to like maybe play a level, level of Republic Commando on PC. <laughs> and then I was like, I go to boot it up and it's like, nah. Not today, son. And I know, I like, and right underneath it says, you know, it has a community thing that says, uh, fix for this not loading and stuff. And I was like, I don't want to go through that right now. Oh, so uh, I didn't, yeah. but I, but I also have it on Xbox. So I think I'll just download the Xbox version and just play it there. So that's true. Uh, old PC games, man, they, the hoops I have to jump through to try to get uh, Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay running is... Mm. Oh. Yeah, the old PC games are very hit or miss. Either they like run super easily, or it's like pulling teeth to get them to, to mm-hmm. just boot up. So uh, Yoda's Challenge was an educational game. Computer educational, that's how you learn to read. Okay. Uh, you learned Yoda... Uh, learned wow yoda would be mad uh, isn't republic commando about to be ported i think it is i think it's out actually yeah it's 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 on it's on backwards compatibility for original xbox mm-hmm. uh, for sure i don't know if it's i'm not sure if it's coming to anything else and I, I know i know originally it was an xbox exclusive uh xbox and pc uh, but it was console exclusive to xbox well, let's be the but... g- gods of old of bringing old games forward. Uh, what was the Republic? Oh, okay. He says he thinks uh, Limited Run is doing a print uh, of Republic Commando. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. I think they've done some other... I think they've done some other prints recently of those old... Like, uh... Which one was it? Of Racer, maybe? They That, ju- that came out run. on, like, Switch and stuff recently. First Press so. and all that. Yeah, this is also on GOG as well. Yeah, I have it on Steam because I think I bought like one of those Star Wars bundles like years ago. Um, yeah, can't beat it. Was in there. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. I mean, you could uh, like in this this bundle, you can pick up Kotor. Where are they? Where are they? Kotor one and two for ten bucks. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. I mean, two those are two of the best RPGs. Uh, Kotor two, uh, Obsidian's. Uh, great track record of making sequels to either a Bioware or a or a Bethesda game, because <laughs> that's that's what Obsidian did for the longest time was make excellent sequels to uh, games from Bioware or um, <laughs> Bethesda. So mm-hmm. uh, it's it's interesting now that they're back in the same company uh, they, with Bethesda now. So they know what they're doing. Sometimes you need that. Yeah, that's section. That's that's what gets me very excited for uh, what else Obsidian's working on. Uh, I I'm really uh, excited for Avowed to see how that what that turns into. Like, what is their Skyrim essentially going to look like? Um, I'm down. Give it to me. Put it in my Sorry. veins. Uh, so. so, speaking yeah. of veins and putting stuff in it, uh, we'll talk about midichlorians. 
Um, <laughs> and we're gonna go through a whole bunch of Star Wars stuff. Uh, absolutely, this... yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, y'all. Uh, I don't know if it's fully up up yet. I hope it is. Like I was telling Trevor, I might have a mental breakdown if it doesn't want to doesn't want to run. I, I don't know if I can handle that right now. My brain is. I ran the auto config wizard, so it told me what settings it wanted. So hopefully, it gives them. Well, we shall see <sighs> if this works. We can hope. I hope all looks all looks well. All right, and this is. I took the time. Trevor was here with me. Watched me almost stress my shit out and uh uninstalled reinstalled it and we should be back hopefully <gasps> i'm sorry about this y'all this won't happen hopefully it won't happen next week like i said if this does i'm gonna send trevor everything and he'll post and we'll just keep on with that just go from there yeah. Ah. Pablo. <laughs> I forgot. All right. Well. Take three. You're right, Hustle. Or right, Flamezer. I'm all over the place. My brain. Okay. Can you guys tweet the stream out? I'm sorry to keep asking y'all to do this. I'm so utterly sorry. I'm going to stitch this all together and put it up later. Uh, probably tomorrow. I'm sorry, y'all. I want to cry just as much as you guys do right now. My soul is gone. Uh, so, while my soul is resting in Valhalla, wherever it feels it needs to rest, um, let's hope it doesn't crash. Knock on wood. And let's get into this list of 25 best Star Wars games of all time. So this came out in 2018, uh, before we had Fallen Order, before Battlefield 2. I can't remember when that came out. I guess we'll see. So there might be some good ones that you think should be on here that are not on here. And it's subjective. Tell us which is your favorite out of these lists. Out of the... Shit. A favorite out of this list. And, uh, yeah. Oh god! I yeah, definitely, say. definitely. Let us know what what some of your favorite Star Wars games are for sure. Oh, the first one, Clone Wars. Never played this. This is what is this? Uh this is oh, an animated show. I, if I remember right, I think, I think this might have been the Clone Wars that was. Because there was a there was a pack in with the original Xbox, that was uh, Tetris Evolution and Star Wars Clone Wars. What a combo! Um, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It was such. It was you know. It was a weird weird thing. But uh, but it came with new new original Xboxes. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is the one. Um, if I were to guess right, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, yeah. but I, th I think I may have owned it and never played it because I don't really remember it, uh, <laughs> at all. Uh, I remember Tetris Evolution. Of course. Um, which was an okay Tetris game. It wasn't even the best Tetris game. Um, that's when, uh, that's when THQ was doing Tetris, uh, not which was not the too. best era original Tetris. No. Um and there's 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 multiple versions of Tetris that were that were pretty good. Like uh I remember some really interesting different ones on like Super Nintendo and whatnot, but uh this isn't a Tetris show we're doing today, so <laughs> but uh <laughs> No. But yeah the Clone Wars I don't really remember so 
I yeah. don't really have much of a, a frame of reference uh, for I, whether it was any good or not. I've never heard of this one. I don't even think I watched the Clone Wars TV show. No, I don't remember. I've seen, I've seen some of it. I need to watch more, because um, uh, I've heard really good things. So, I, yeah, because they be really good. brought back like Darth Maul. They did a lot of good things in there, from what mm. I've heard. Uh, what's up, pirate? We we back. Knock on Heck wood. Yeah. Back and add it. Um, did a full uninstall, reinstall. If if it crashes again, I think we'll just record the audio. To be honest, and put some video up. I don't know if we can every fifteen minutes keep coming back. Have it crash, yeah. Uh, but hopefully it it holds. Hopefully it's DS. Uh, Disney Infinity three point oh. In other words, Disney Infinity games. Yeah, so I mean, I heard Disney Infinity was great. Um, it was during that during that era of a whole bunch of uh, toys, uh, toys to to life uh, thing where you know you had Skylanders that started, and then you had like Disney Infinity, then you had Lego Dimensions. Uh, I think I, I didn't play them. I I heard it was good. Um, just, like, if you were doing, if you were doing one of those games, you were doing one of those games. Yeah. Um, I don't think you were, you were going to spend a ton of money to do all of them, uh, because doing one was a, a money sink already, yeah. and my money sink was LEGO Dimensions, uh. uh, because you got to also put together LEGO, so, uh, plus, yeah. plus it had a lot of. It had a lot of interesting properties that that I liked at that point, you know, like Back to the Future and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I, I just ended up not not playing it, but uh, from from all I heard, it was pretty good. Yeah, I don't see this as not that I don't play family friendly games. I just I don't see this as being my type of game. Yeah, I can see that. Don't get me wrong; I will play. Like I, I just said before we started, uh, take three. Uh, I bought one of the Lego Star Wars. I think the Lego. Col- what did, which one did I get? Uh, the complete, complete saga. saga. Yeah. So that's uh, which games is that? I don't even know which games are in here. Uh, oh, it's it's all of them. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. So all six of them are in here. I'm playing through that. I love Lego games, and I would rather spend my money yeah, on a Lego game. And, yeah, and that's that's why I went Lego Dimensions too. Is I had previously played Lego games, so I knew kind of what the what Lego games were were bringing to the table. Uh, so, so good, man. yeah, they're just a ton of fun. Uh, but yeah, Disney Infinity. Um, yeah, the like. Uh, yeah, I saw a bunch of the figures in stores and stuff, but yeah, just never. Um, but I, I was never outside of like. Maybe Star Wars and Marvel. I was never a big Disney, Disney guy. So, yeah, like it just never. I can see that. Yeah, like, I just you know. Like I grew up in the the Silver Age, like Pocahontas, Lion King. So I'm I partial to them, but this the new Disney. I'm not really. I don't I don't watch new Disney stuff unless it's um unless it's uh, on Disney Plus or yeah, that's. Like it's really good, and people are like, "You have to watch it." Other than that, I, I don't go out of my way. Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much where I'm at. Like, like the only thing that isn't that isn't Marvel or Star Wars that I watch that I've seen on Disney Plus. Uh, I've start I've watched uh, all the episodes of that new Mighty Ducks show, and that's just because I have a big nostalgia for the Mighty Ducks movies. Man, those Mighty those... Ducks movies are they slap though. <laughs> Oh, they're still good. Like I, I don't even care. They're great. They're so cheesy, uh, but they're and, so good. Yeah, I'm a, and I'm okay with that. Like, like they can be cheesy. Um, and I, I like, I like the new show so far. So, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's got a, it's got a, a nice, good bit of nostalgia, uh, while feeling like a new thing, feeling like a modern show. So, uh, they're doing good it. stuff there. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. This, I love it's fun. getting and it's, suggestions for. 
stuff that we used to watch made new because most of them like i won't even watch most reboots and stuff because i'm like nah like i'm so anxious about the cowboy bebop reboot that i'm like i don't think i'm gonna watch it it could be good and i hope it's good but i just don't want to see especially cowboy bebop that was like my one of my first animes i don't want to see it be remade it doesn't need to be remade anime you can literally go in a thousand different directions i don't want to see cowboy yeah. bebop remade <laughs> Yeah, it seems uh, weird to me to remake an animated show like that. Mm-hmm. Because um, it, it, so, man, it's but, up. Yeah, I would, I would think most, most animated things would for the most part. Uh, so, but uh, Pirate does say that if you are at all a Disney nerd, watch the Imagineering Project. Uh, never heard of it. Which, yeah, it's, it's on. I've seen it on Disney Plus. I've just never watched it. Um, I, I do like so. the behind the scenes stuff. Like I, I've watched the WandaVision behind the scenes mm-hmm. probably about three times now, just to get references and how they talk about the show. Um, I hope they do. Have yeah. they done a Falcon and Winter Soldier behind the scenes yet? I think they did one, maybe that released. I I still need to watch the WandaVision one and uh and that and and the you Mandalorian watch it before ones. Fame does so. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, I just love that behind yeah. the scenes stuff. Yeah, I I like a lot of I like a lot of it. It just depends on my mood. Like if I'm in a documentary mood, I will like throw something like that on. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, there's uh, there's the uh, I think I want to say it's like Marvel six one six. Maybe they have the different Marvel docs. Like, uh, it's like a basically a series of Marvel docs, and like one of them was about Japanese Spider Man. That's really good. And one of them was about the like the women uh, behind the comics and, and Marvel and stuff that was pretty good. Uh, so, and it's and there's others I just haven't watched. Continued watching them, but but yeah, there's there's good stuff there on uh, Disney Plus. So yeah, um, so you're probably seeing there's no blur on the background because you guys know I have two overlays. Uh, I'm gonna see if the, that background blur that I was using was the problem. It could be, but uh, I don't know. We're going to keep it. I'm going to keep a close eye on OBS right now. It's bare bones, nothing hooked up. So I hope it doesn't do me wrong. Uh, So that's 24, Disney Infinity 3. I can't imagine what they're on now if this came out in 2015. So probably Disney Infinity. Uh, Well, they, no, no, they shut it down. They, they stopped making Disney Infinity stuff. Uh, I think 3.0 was the last bit of them. Oh, that's kind of disappointing. For I mean, we got Funkos now, so I understand the not wanting to build figures and stuff. I, I think it was just those games had a certain shelf life, and Skylanders was the popular one. Oh, um, yeah. so they, you know, when you come to the market later than the than the originator, you're kind of just trying to, I guess, glom off your pop popularity as a brand, which Disney was. Um, yeah. And they were just, you know, they were they were kind of late to the game in that. And I mean, even Lego Dimensions was late to the game, uh, but at least it was it was a little bit different because you actually got to build some stuff. But but I, I think they just, you know, they tried to they they tried to annualize Skylanders and the oh, fact that, that you know annualizing those when there's a ton of toys that come with it, like you know, parents are gonna get like I don't think we need to keep buying these. Yeah. Uh, year after year, so uh, it just it kind of got to that, and they they oversaturated it just like just like everything else in video games that gets popular, and then like you see eighteen different ones, and then all of a sudden it's not it's not in style anymore. The yeah. kids the kids no longer care, uh, and then you're left with a ton of product on shelves that doesn't move until you discount it, and then fill it with something else. Fill it with the next thing. God, you're not wrong there. I just... Yeah. Figures and stuff like that, accompanying that is not like an amiibo, is so... such a weird thing to me. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, like, it, it very much is like an amiibo, at least... But at least with amiibo, it's it's different games. Yeah. Uh, that, that do different things. And they cross thing, over, you know? and they do all kinds mm-hmm. of things. Yeah, yeah and... It's me, you weird. <laughs> Yeah, Disney uh Disney cashed in on that, but yeah, it it just didn't didn't work out for Disney uh in the long run. 
So what I mean, do we got? What do we got for number twenty three here? I think we can be honest that Mar- well, Marvel and Star Wars is keeping Disney afloat right now. Oh, the Lego Force Definitely. Awakens. Okay. Not play this one, and I don't, I don't think play it's either, in that pack. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that complete saga came out before Force Awakens was made, probably. Yeah. Uh, so. I love the Star Wars. But yeah. I love Lego games. I love the DC ones, uh, the Marvel ones. They're mm-hmm. so good. Oh my God. Yeah, they're just, they're fun. They're just kind of fun time wasters, honestly. Uh, honestly, yeah. Which I'm all for. Like, like I actually really liked Lego City Undercover. Ooh, that uh, one was good. It, yeah, it was really fun. Um, even the, because I actually, I want to say back when I was actually doing reviews, I'm pretty sure I reviewed the 3DS version of that game, and it was actually really good. <laughs> so hell yeah, Lego knows yeah, what so, they're doing. Don't don't sleep don't sleep on them Lego games. If you like, oh, sorry, if you like the old school collectathon games, you're gonna love Lego games because. But they're not collectathons that are impossible. Because, you know, there's always that one yeah. thing that you can't get. You can. You can 100% a Lego game in, like, a week, probably. It's it's almost like playing a, a like, an old-school, like, side-scroller beat-em-up mm-hmm. with, like, with, like, a very light puzzle game aspect to it as well. Yep. So, because there's definitely light puzzles. Although sometimes, like, those, po- like... They have simple solutions, and sometimes my mind, uh, I don't know if it's like I think too complexly about it, and then I'm just like, what am I supposed to do? And you then I just I struggle look... playing control. You're like, just sit down and think about this. You're you're overthinking. I'm like, no, it's got to be. Oh, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like I th- I think we all do that to an extent. So, like, I play these games, and I'm just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And then I look it up, and I'm like, oh. Well, that, was, that was easy. Why didn't I just do that? <laughs> so, yeah. and it happens, it, but like it, but it, it seems like kids catch on to that like super quick. Um, kids today are different than so we than were. Else. Don't forget, guys, there is a link in the description. Um, hopefully, it's still there. The Humble Bundle, may the fourth be with you. Uh, a link, you can pick it up pick up whatever game i am an affiliate so my charity of choice is the wikipedia foundation because we use wikipedia a lot on this show so there would be a split there but there's so much games Ooh, okay clone wars hold on there's so much games on here and then if you just want to pick up a whole chunk of games they have the x-wing series the jedi knight series the classic series which is like early 90s and then the modern section i don't think it includes fallen order though but we will get to fallen order love that game uh yeah lego games you can't you can't go wrong yeah. oh what is this empire of war it was a strategy game oh i'm not good at these but i do kind of love them i love starcraft yeah it's 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 along those veins i know i want to say there was another one galactic battlegrounds that was like age of empires ish uh, and it was really good. Um, I do need to play both of these and see if I like them. <laughs> Again, it's it's been a, a long time. Uh, I have Empire War installed. I just haven't played it for a long time. So I can see. I'm I love these games so much. I love the like I put so much hours already into Age of Empires. All three of them that are out so far, and mm. it's kind of been like, do you have a life? No, not really. No, I'm just sitting here writing reviews and doing stuff. But I, I love these games. I love StarCraft. I suck at them. But I love them. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not great at them either, to be completely honest with you. Um I wish I was better. Uh which it annoys me very much, uh playing with uh, a buddy of mine who is good at these games and uh <laughs> it's very frustrating, but yeah, I've just never been never been great at them. Um, although I do enjoy playing them. Right. Uh, again, the stream might crash. If it does, we'll try to come back and we'll try to limp through this episode and I'll stitch it all together. Um, 
whether you're listening to it now or later, when, if you're listening to it, it's because, uh, you know, it's been all stitched together and Trevor has so graciously put it up where podcasts are available. So much make sure you leave a review so we can read it in the show or go to level1gaming.com. Go under the level one. Actually, why am I talking about it? Go on to the level one originals. Click the the episode. Go to the bottom and, um, you know, leave a little comment and we'll read that. Ooh, where am I? I scroll too fast sometimes. Leave a little comment and leave a little little, little happy face, whatever you want to see. And uh, we'll read it out on the show as well. Uh, and uh, we have uh, Chakalaka. What up, Chakalaka? In the chat. Level What's one up, Chakalaka? He's, uh, he says shout out to Star Wars Episode One, the game for the PS1. Uh, I remember playing that game. It was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Star Wars Episode Revenge of the Sith. Uh, which hey, also shout out. Ah, Revenge of the Sith. I showed that. I did re- retrospective on that too. It's uh it's probably one of the best movie tie-in games I've ever played, like I was saying. Uh but it's very limited. But it's probably better yeah, I would, than I, some. I would say in general, the the amount of Star Wars games that are good completely outweighs the amount of Star Wars games that are bad. For sure. I, most, I agree with most, that. Most Star Wars games are pretty good. At, at the very least, are fun, even they if they're cover, not the best. They cover so much. I mean, this is a a, a strategy game. We, we've talked about Squadrons, which is a, a flights, not flights, sim, but a dogfight simulator, a mm-hmm. toy games, family games, Lego games. There's not a Star Wars game that doesn't fall in some kind of. There's RPGs, uh, full on battle shooters. Even not even including the new games, there's so much Star Wars covers. I just wish they would do better a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. X Wing Alliance. This I think X-wing this came Alliance. out. This is this is very much a like a Wing Commander game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is an old school like PC. Um, X Wing game. You can't go wrong with these. This I mean, this is what Squadrons was started on. Yeah, they, these are the kind of games that like. Um, I I never I never really played them, but I, I've never been like a flight sim, uh, kind of guy. So, but I know a lot of people who really love these games, and uh, if you're into the flight sim stuff, they're generally pretty great. And these ones, they're not. They don't have to be graphically beautiful. I I wanted to play Squadrons today, but I couldn't. But Squadrons and those type of games they don't have to be beautiful the gameplay has to be really good and from what I've heard of Squadrons the gameplay is pretty banging yeah that's what I've heard and it doesn't make you sick well actually we'll see I'll stream it tomorrow we'll see if I'll get sick during Squadrons (laughs) Uh, I would say less likely if you're not wearing a VR headset probably more likely if you are oh that would would be I would guess I mean, you yeah. know, I can only play like Mirror's Edge thirty minutes at a time because I just I'll die if That's I play true. for longer. Yeah. Uh, Taco Luck, uh, uh, Pirate says, "Don't mess with the uh, with the wing games." He loves the wing games. Taco Luck says, "Revenge of the Sith game was low key a good fight in game." And shout out to the fact that you can do a non canon ending during the story please playthrough. That's true. That's cool. They do have two different endings. Who is this made Very of? Cool. Uh, Jedi, the, Jedi Academy, the Collective, and Lucas Earth. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, Jedi Academy. I did play this on stream. I still have that vod up on my stream. I love this game. It's hard as shit, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, in in general, the Jedi Knight series of games were very, very hard. But they're uh. They're just great games. Yeah, and you can't go wrong with a good Jedi Academy game. The second one is a bit of a mess, but the first one, Mm -hmm. Splendifilous. (laughs) Uh, Shadow of the Empire. Oh, look at that chunky booty. Yep, this was the uh, the N64. Uh, So you know how your graphics are going to look. which I mean, considering what those graphics are, it's actually not bad looking. 
Um, and the fact that it ran without, I mean, look how many games we've played just in the last five years that you run them and then they crash. You didn't have that benefit on the console. Look at Returnal. Yeah. I've watched somebody get six hours into a cycle and then die and lose everything. Or uh, not die, but it crashes and lose everything. Crash. <gasps> oh, man. I think that I would, instantly that for me, that would be like, I'm done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm done with this. I'm done with you. That's why we wait sometimes on buying it. And also, I'm not yeah. going to spend $90 on a <laughs> on a roguelike. Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed. I have not played Force it. Force Unleashed. It was really good. Um, I heard it's better the... than the second. The second one kind of tried to overdo it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Force Unleashed was was good. It uh, it had uh, Sam Witwer played uh, the protagonist, uh, Star Destroyer, right? Yeah, or, he was big uh, in everything. Star Killer, something I, I think was his, was the character's yeah. name. Yeah, um, something weird. Yeah, so. But yeah, it was it was really good. Uh, at the time it came out, I want to say it was, it was quote unquote canon, but I don't think it's considered canon anymore uh, in the pantheon of Star Wars. But uh, but yeah, it was it was a it was a fun story. I mean, you literally pull a star destroyer out of the sky. I yeah. mean, it's 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 a good representation of what. Literally, a dude with uh, access to all these sweet force powers could do. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was, it was just a ton of fun to play, uh, and really made you feel like a damn Jedi. Like in in the in the purest of sense, it was it was a great game. I really like the Force Unleashed. I could I could definitely go back and play that at some point here. I like games where you can be the bad guy, and I think that's why I kind of like Mass Effect. You're technically the good guy, but you can be an arsehole. I just love being the bad guy sometimes. I just want to be the bad guy. Let me be the bad guy. Uh, Chocolock says, Yo, true story in Star Wars Battlefront 2 for the PS2. Uh, you can play as the Empire during, during, for a, during a campaign. And if you win as the Empire, there's a cutscene where Leia is getting force choked by vader and she's being lifted in the air and kicking her feet it's such a weird visual i mean little stuff like yeah. that everybody wants to be the good guy not everybody obviously look at me definitely not <laughs> i just want to be the bad guy sometimes huh Oof. yeah what uh pirate said uh until disney bought star wars force unleashed was considered like in the same canon as the comics um, essentially man disney i mean disney has done a lot for the series disney has I, done a lot for whatever but man they suck <laughs> i can i understand why they're doing it that way it's it's so they have, have a that's part of it but it's also a a through line for the story to make sure yeah i guess that they have control so like i get it but uh but there's a ton of good Star Wars stories that that they could weave into it as well. Um, exactly. But I, I, I think, I think at least when when they first took it over, they, it was easier to do it that way, um, because yeah. there's so much. So I mean, they so could like, literally I, I can, just write it off as, like we were saying, as a, it, this is another yeah. memory or people how they thought it was. Yeah, this is a legend or something, you know, yeah. If you read the Star Wars um, book, the universe is so expansive that Darth Vader is just but a small itty-bitty part of everything that ever goes on in Star Wars lore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a ton of other lore and everything going on. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't happen uh, to only people with the last name Skywalker, so... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so moving on to the next one. Before we get into that, I gotta ask you guys and Trevor, what if you know what is uh, your saber color? 
Because there's been tons of like those like Harry Potter stuff out there. What is your saber color? What is your crystal? Your kyber crystal color? I've never done a quiz or anything to find my saber color. Uh, but I would love to have a purple one, personally. Purple? Okay. But let me... Now I'm like, what does purple mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh... uh... No, I don't want to buy one. Nice try, though. Uh, you too can have a purple color. Are they just gonna go through this? Uh, okay, let me... Red, purple. One of the most unique lightsaber colors in the Star Wars saga, the purple lightsaber is a distinct color blade that isn't seen in great numeration according to Claudia Gray's novel Master and Presence. The color is a manifestation of the properties of the Jedi bonding to its kyber crystal. The most famous will... Uh... It's just... Okay, it requires the Jedi to be dangerously close to the dark side. The purple blade can there be seen as a careful temperament between the light and the dark side of its wielder. Okay. You straddle in that line. Let's see. Ah, so I got a quiz and mine was black. A black lightsaber or dark saber is one of the... It's only one of its kind known to exist. It's created by the first Mandalorian ever to who be inducted into the Jedi Order. Features unique black plasma. Blah, 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 blah. Allows... Alright, so mine is a, another rare one too. Look at that, we're both rare. Yeah, we are. But there's also. Chaka. Isn't that Chakalaka just... said his is blue. Oh, you. Let me go back to that. There's not just uh, lightsabers, there's there's light whips, there's all kinds of things out there. Uh, Chakalaka saying purple is a little dangerous, it means you play with the dark side. Damn Oof. right I do. Yeah, he does. He, he naughty. <laughs> Uh, blue sabers are technically wielded by the guardians that seek to defend the order from outside mo malevolence who could do them harm. Okay. Okay, Chakalaka. You the good guy here. <laughs> we are obviously not. Or at least me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> A pirate, you are yellow. Let's see what yellow is. Cause, uh, uh, some of the rarest blades wielded by a member of the Jedi Order... The Jedi Sentinels comprise of three uh, force practical knowledge that make them extra spies. Yellow reflects a balance between green of the Jedi Consular and blue of the Jedi Guardian. Sentinels were exclusively employed by the Jedi Temple Guards. Okay. Although, if I had the choice, I wouldn't be a Jedi. I'd probably be Sith. I'll be a thousand percent. <laughs> that kind of I person. could go either way. But Obviously. Purple blade. Yeah. <laughs> uh, episode one racer racing game Star Wars I, re I remember being pretty good I think uh, so right? and you can uh, you can buy it like on Switch and PS4 and uh, everywhere Yeah, where video games are sold at this point so uh, if you have any nostalgia for it yeah you can go back and actually play it and uh, most on of these consoles, games so are short-ish. Except for, like, the newer games, most of these games can be, like, played yeah. in a weekend. Or they're unlimited replayability, so you can, like, play them for 20 minutes and just piss off. Yeah. Ooh! Oh, she an old one. The old school. 83 Star 83 Wars. Ar yeah. The old arcade game. The good old I don't think I ever graphic. got a chance to play it, yeah. You were young. Yeah, I I want to say I've seen it in a in an arcade before, but I don't Man. think I've ever actually sat and played it. But that would I miss arcades <laughs> so much. Me too. Me too. It's it's funny because like growing up in the '90s as a kid, there were literally two arcades in my mall, and like right now now the mall like is half empty. So it's arcades, man. And there's no arcades. Shout out to Palladium uh, and Reds, man. They were my shits back in the day. Yeah, it's 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 very sad what's happened to arcades and uh although like the, the kind of the rise of the barcade yeah. uh, is definitely definitely cool to see. 
Uh, and then COVID said, was, not today, Satan. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I really hope, like, the because there's, uh, there was actually an arcade in Pittsburgh, uh, which is close to me, called Victory Point, uh, which it's not a traditional arcade, uh, and they don't actually sell alcohol, but they do allow you to bring your own in. Oh. Uh, and then, like, basically, you, like, pay a fee, you give it to them, and then they hand it out to you when you want it. Um, and then, uh, but, like, their arcade is also, like, unlimited play. You just pay, like, a set fee and then just go go to town. That's cool. Uh, but they, you know, they would also have, like, I know they had, like, you know, a room with, like, consoles and stuff set up as well, like, with VR and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, so, yeah. Uh, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, Victory Point, although I don't know how uh, how their business operating is going since uh, COVID, so... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so... That's how it, that's unfortunately how it goes. I know there was also a cool barcade in Portland uh, when I was there for uh, Kent's wedding uh, that we visited. Uh, that was pretty awesome, and that's where I got to play an actual Killer Queen machine. Uh, wow! And Killer Queen in the arcade is fucking cool as hell. Hell yeah! Uh, so yeah, mm. that's it's a really awesome like co-op versus game. Um, and if you ever see it in an arcade somewhere, uh, get a group of friends and play it because it's really cool. Yeah. Arcade just, man, it was a different time. I miss them. Uh, yeah, so ho hopefully them. we see some of them survive. Yes, um, please, because we, we need those. We need to understand. I mean, that's why we do this show. We need to understand where we came from to appreciate what's coming. Absolutely. Uh, make sure you guys tweet the stream out. Let people know that knock on wood 36 minutes strong no crashes yet and watch as i say that and you you're really <laughs> trying to jinx us aren't you i'm really trying to jinx this but yeah make um, sure you tweet the stream out so people know that but I, I just want to point out uh a pirate i uh, said did someone say pittsburgh i am from there uh that's that's awesome um i'm not from pittsburgh but i am in ohio right across the river uh i am it takes Fever. me about 45 minutes 45 minutes to drive to Pittsburgh. So I am right there on the, uh, in Eastern Ohio. So meet up <laughs> when COVID is over. <laughs> uh, so this uh, is Chakalaka. What's up? Sorry. No, you go. Sorry. Chakalaka says, uh, oh my God, I want to play the Star Wars arcade game from the late nineties. I think there was three levels and one of them was the battle of Hoth. And the other one was a lightsaber fight with Vader. I kind of vaguely remember that. I hope it's on this um, list because I'm like I can't remember any of that. Yeah, like that that definitely sounds familiar, but uh, especially the lightsaber fight part. But it's it's been a long time. So but Bounty that would be Hunter. Really cool to see. Uh, I mean, I think Bounty Hunter was was the first you play as, as Jango Fett, but I think the next game that was supposed to come out. 1313. Oh God, that made that game rest in peace. I think you were supposed to play Boba Fett and then that one. I'm not 100% sure. Yes, I'm pretty sure, yeah. But you were supposed to be a yeah, bounty hunter, yeah. Yeah, you, you play as Boba Fett. Uh, I think it kind of maybe was part of the catalyst for uh, making Boba Fett a popular character. Or no, you play as Jango Fett, actually. Yeah, Jango, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it it definitely helped uh, popularize popularize the Mandalorians, especially to kids that were playing in the PS2 GameCube uh, era uh, of video games. Uh, it was definitely it was it was a cool game. I remember it being kind of hard. I um, mean, it says the controls were janky, so yeah. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, I yeah I remember there. Were, I knew there was something about it that was weird. Um, so yeah, it was probably the con controls, and I mean that that kind of fits into that era. There was a lot of games where the controls were just like, like they hadn't quite, they, they weren't quite there yet. Um, yeah. So. Man. But that was that was something that got fixed in the in like the 360 PS3 era for sure. Nineteen ninety two. This is what we started the show off with: Super Star Wars, destroy your soul. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, those games were very hard, uh, which, I mean, for 1992, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Uh, but they were great. They were great games. Man, they would have been quarter years at the arcade. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yes, mm -hmm. they would have been. Burn through your whole allowance. Mm -hmm. uh, the Old Republic, that's the MMO. Yes. Which Trevor and I were playing last month, and we'll play more. I've just been trying to get a whole bunch of stuff done so I can get to streaming schedules. But this is uh, the Bioware game. Um, you can play as Jedi or Sith. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. It's constantly updating. Uh, once you get to a certain level, it does lock the story out, and it is a, a $10 a month subscription. But it mm. takes you like 50 hours, 60 hours to get there, so you don't have to worry. And there's tons of free stuff you can do if you don't want to pay that. Yeah, plus I'm pretty sure you can play, like, basically, because each individual character, at least the beginning part of their story, is unique. Mm -hmm. So you can at least play through a good chunk, like, each of those stories mm -hmm. without having to pay, which is cool. So, yeah, yeah it, does a, it does some cool stuff. The first Rogue Squadron. I, I have to go back and play it. I did play two. I did re retrospective on it. Mm -hmm. It was... It was okay. They're unique for the time. This Rogue yeah. Squad 2 was the launch title for the GameCube, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so, yeah. I think... I want to say Rogue Squadron might have... I know it was on PC. Uh, N64, yeah. And so, yeah, I was going to say, I thought it was on 64 as well. That's what I was about to say, so... Man. So, yeah. Yeah, these... None of these games have been, like, re uh, except for the Star Wars... The... Force Awakens haven't been new games. Dark Forces, oh my god, this is old. Yeah, Dark Forces, I actually like literally just downloaded again today. Um, because <laughs> I, I thought about uh playing it. Uh, I just didn't have time before we started the podcast, but uh, <laughs> you'll play it tonight. I totally could, yeah. I mean, this is where they introduced uh Kyle Katarn, who was the character in the Jedi Knight games as well so this is kind of like the the introduction to that um but yeah these were i mean uh yeah it was basically doom star wars yeah uh, i mean you could see it just from the basic kind of ui mm -hmm. uh don't Which forget I mean, guys oh nani Opa. I, I was gonna say there were a ton of games like that uh around this time that it came out so a ton well this is just the 25 best, but there's a whole list of every single Star Wars game. We're not going to get through them all because a lot of them are shovelware and we've just never heard of them. And especially the, like the early 80s stuff, just don't know it. But there's a ton. Make sure to leave your favorite Star Wars game, Star Wars movie as well in the uh, descript uh, sub comments. And if you are a just coming in now, uh, leave your lightsaber color. And maybe it'll be on the list and we'll read it off. Oh, Battle for Naboo. I also have this one too. <laughs> oh, it's upside down. Yeah, Still haven't I got that it to run. <laughs> I've it's... heard it's pretty good. It's supposed to be pretty good. Is this one? It might be on this list. <laughs> it's probably somewhere in here. Battle for Naboo. I, I can't wait to get it running because I. I like dogfight style games. I just not good at them because you know blah, blah, blah. they'll make me vomit. Uh, was the um, Star Wars trilogy of games for this at SNES covered? No, not yet because we're just going through this oh, twenty-five. Yeah, yeah, it was. Best. Oh, it was. It was. Those were the Super Star Wars games. Yeah. Oh. That we talked about. Yeah, there yeah. it is. Oh, they just went through the series. Oh, I thought they. Okay. There, yeah, there yeah. That was the. That was all three of them. Yeah. But yeah, we talked about it uh, towards the beginning of the podcast earlier today, so. You have to go back, like, three shows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rogue Squad 2. This one was, you know what? Since I did emulate it, and it's uh, on the Dolphin, which is the original name for, you know, game, whatever, we I can't remember. It ran well. Thank you. Except for when you went into first person. Then it was, like, awful, but. This was a really good game. 
I can't wait to see if Squadrons now holds up. Yeah, I'm sure it does. I think I'm going to be nauseous 20 minutes in, man. I mean, it, it very much, yeah. It uh, very much could be. Get get you get some drama, mean and. Uh... Ugh, pro I will have to, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love Mirror's Edge, but I haven't been able to finish that game ever, so I'm yeah. not hopeful. <laughs> Would yeah, you watch me have a mental breakdown during playing it? Well, I mean, that's I don't know if that's a plus, but. <laughs> You know. Depends how you, you want to spend your day. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, it surely could be entertaining to some. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get into some YouTube stuff. Nah, let's leave that for another day. Uh, yeah, Jedi yeah. Forces 2. No, Dark Forces 2. What was this? Yeah, so this is, it's kind of where Jedi Knight started. Uh, it was a sequel to Dark Forces, uh, obviously, as, as anybody can tell by the name, uh, but yeah, it was a continuation of that, and, I mean, these games were, like, were huge at the time, uh, and, and there's, uh, there's still a, uh, fair bit of, of good feelings and nostalgia behind them, so, uh, they're definitely, uh, great classic games, uh, whether or not people can still get into them, it really just depends on how, how far back you can go when playing a game. Like, I could totally play these games again oh, yeah. today. But but I, I could understand if people were just like, yeah, that game's just too old for me. But See, I understand but... that. And then they'll probably go back and play, like, Final Fantasy Nine, which only has, oops, 11 more days before it gets off the Game Pass, y'all. So go play Final Fantasy Nine and be like, oh, this is great. The same era. <laughs> Yeah. You can't pick and choose. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Final Fantasy IX is timeless, though, so I get it. Fantasy IX, man. <laughs> I can't wait to... I, I'm at the last cut scene, I think. I can't wait to go back and just finish that tonight. Star Wars. Lego. We talked about Lego. Go play them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you uh, apparently made a, a wise purchase. Uh, from this list. I love it, man. I'll buy anything Lego. Uh, TIE Fighter. Man, they have a lot of, like, dogfight games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say, the the person who did this list definitely loves uh, their TIE. But TIE Fighter is, is definitely a classic in that genre of Star Wars stuff, so... Uh, I know a lot of people were, were super into it. Ooh. Public Commando. The one uh, that is getting a port or, or re-release. Re-release, yeah. It was uh, it was originally Xbox and PC. Uh, it's on backwards compatibility right now. Uh, I tried to play it on PC earlier and it told me no. Uh, <laughs> so, but uh, but yeah, it's I I just remember it being uh, really fun, really cool. Uh, you play as a clone trooper. Uh, during the Clone Wars, uh, so uh, and and you play actually in a squadron. So yeah, I uh, pirate just said Republic Commando is tough. Yeah, I remember it being pretty hard uh, as hard. well. So <laughs> yeah, I I do I do want to play it though because uh, it's been a long time, um, and I just remember it being fun. It's a it's a fun first person shooter uh, set in the Star Wars universe. I say a lot of these games, if you want to. Play them on PC because you can go to like somewhere like Nexus Mods or ModDB, and there's a lot of mods to fix some of the stuff. Um, I usually advocate for people to play games on PC just for the mods on PC, but there's nothing wrong with playing it on console too. Have to play it where you have it. No, I would say, I would say because of how well the X Xbox backwards compatibility is, how awesome it is. Um, if if these games are available for that, I would highly recommend them on the backwards compatibility. Um, even Knights of the Old Republic, uh, yeah, you're not going to get some of like the extra mods, um, but the actual game looks really good uh, on backwards. Games, play through without mods first, and then put mods in. 
Yeah, so, I mean, I know, like, Knights of the Old Republic, I thought, looked better on Xbox with backwards compatibility than it did on my PC with mods. So, I mean, take that for what you will. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, those versions are really good. So, I will probably be playing Republic Commando on my Xbox Series X, uh, soon. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, I didn't like this. This game was a hot mess to me. It just didn't... I got to the... I think I talked about this before. The really tall section where you're in a skyscraper and you kind of got to, like, jump between buildings. And I just lost my way. And usually where enemy me is, you is go, but that wasn't the case. And mm. I had a whole meltdown. and Not meltdown, but, like... I put cheats on to kind of like clip through the walls to see where I could go. Uh, and yeah, it just, this game was a mess. It didn't have that little like nudge to say, hey, go here. So I got lost and then never found my way out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it definitely had some uh, problematic stuff in it, but I think overall, uh, it being a continuation of the other Jedi Knight stuff definitely helped it uh, in that respect, I think. Um, and and just it was it was uh, it was different and gave you more freedom than a lot of other Star Wars games at the time, and I think that's why people were super into it because uh, it was it was different. You got to play as a Jedi, you got to do your own thing, you got to customize Cal mm -hmm. Katarn and what he could do, like powers wise and stuff like that. So uh, I think that that freedom is what what got people into it. Hell yeah! Um, but in the chat, we got a uh, Chakalaka says. Uh, to uh, pay respects to the unreleased Star Wars games, such as Star Wars 1313, yeah. uh, and the Amy Henning directed Star Wars games. Uh, I would have loved to see what those were, uh, honestly. Uh, yeah. But unfortunately, gone too soon. Um, and he also mentions the Battlefront 3 uh, for PS3 demo. Uh, yeah, that's true. And how that never saw the light of day, and yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, that's why I... I advocate so strongly for video game preservation and if it comes down to it, emulating, not pirating, but emulating because some of these games, I mean, we'll, we'll go into an episode of games that are stuck in that weird who owns them, nobody owns them, so they're just lost to the history mm -hmm. books, but you gotta protect these games. Definitely. Trevor is going to talk about this the third game. I'll be right back, y'all. Uh, so yeah, Knights of the Old Republic 2. Uh, the Sith Lords. Uh, KOTOR 2. Uh, it was it was really it was really good. A lot of people don't like it as much as the first one and I think I think that, that might come down to the story. It, there were some I remember them having a, a few bugs here and there, but I think mostly it came down to the story maybe not being as good as the first one. And I think the first one had that, that big reveal. Um, had, you know, uh, Revan, uh, whom you can see behind me. Uh, and, and I think that was a big draw for a lot of people uh, in the first one. But I think Obsidian did a lot of cool stuff uh, with the gameplay elements of Knights of the Old Republic 2. Uh, and being able to uh, essentially like like recruit and make and turn uh, your party into a party of Jedi was uh, I think really cool uh, to to get people into the Jedi Order. So uh, I th I think those aspects uh, definitely changed it up a bit uh, and made it a, a different experience uh, from the first Kotor, uh, even though uh, it was part of the same series. So. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that is, that is my take on that, but, uh, I, I liked, I liked Knights of the Republic 2 a lot, um, even though I, I think the, I think the story of the first one speaks to me more, uh, and it'll forever be, uh, my favorite, I think, but, but yeah, KOTOR 2 did some really di interesting and different things, uh, that, that make it different uh, from the first one, uh, but I don't think it, it made it, like, any better or worse. I think it's just, you know, what, what you personally like better. Yeah, an extension. 
Mm-hmm. Which, yeah. I mean, y'all, we talked about this several times. Four dollars for both of them. Come on. You can pick up both of these games for ten bucks. Probably some of the best Star Wars games that people have to talk about ever in terms of, like, story and the way they are. Yeah, I mean, you can get them dirt cheap. Uh, so do it. Bite that bullet. Bullet. It's uh, in the description if you want. Uh, Battlefront 2 and 2005's Battlefront 2, not the new one. Yes. Yeah, the, the OG BF2. Man, these ones, uh, these games were good. Yeah, they were they were just fun. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, they're just you know, you are uh, a trooper, uh, just fighting dudes. I mean, it it's essentially it's old school battlefield, but yeah. in the Star Wars universe is what it is. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if you if you like the OG battlefield games. Uh, you will like the OG Battlefront games, uh, because they are the sames. Just... They really are. One is set in Star in the Star Wars universe, uh, for the most part, so. I do want to play the new one for the story and maybe a few rounds of multiplayer, but I'm, like, not... So, once they took out the loot box aspect of it, um, the game itself is pretty good. Uh, the multiplayer, I think, is, is really good in the new one. Okay. Uh, when, 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 you know, they're not trying to nickel and dime you. Of course. Uh, the story wasn't like, bad. Okay. Uh, okay. It wasn't bad, but it was like, it's very short, um, uh... for what it was. I, I, like... I think I like the character of Aiden Verso more than I like the actual story. Uh, but that's probably because it's Janino Gavankar. Uh, and she she's bae. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's gorgeous. She's an actual hardcore gamer. Like, I mean, like, what's what's not to like about Janina Gavankar? So. God, you ain't never lied. <laughs> um. But yeah, I, I like the character, and I like that that she actually got to play a canonical character in Star Wars lore. Yes, uh, for sure. So uh, I think I think the character would be served better with you know maybe if she was added into like either a TV show or a movie uh, and got a good good role in one of those. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's it's. It's not bad, like, and and I think the fact that you can play Battlefront Two now on Game Pass, uh, with no, with no barrier to entry, no, you don't even have to pay anything at this point. You can just go in there, mm -hmm. uh, literally guns a blazing, and uh, and play it. It's it's definitely worth playing. Um, I would say for for those that want a uh, good multiplayer shooter, mm -hmm. um, but. At the same time, we're living in a world where there are a lot of good free-to-play multiplayer shooters. That's so, true. really, which one do you pick? It's, I mean, I can't tell you that it's, it's all personal preference, but yeah, I mean, but yeah, we, I mean, we, we talked about this last week with the open worlds, and then we got into uh, open worlds that are daily, like Destiny. You got to pick which one you want to spend your time with. Very hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a hard call, like, because I mean, literally, they're all good. So it it's it's really it literally all just comes down to personal preference. Mm -hmm. Like, I you know, like, and when it comes to like battle royales, like I prefer Apex, but someone else is gonna prefer like Fortnite, um, mm -hmm. or you know, what whatever have you. They're all good. It's yeah. just all personal preference. So, so you know. You can, I, I like both best. I like both Destiny and The Division too, but if I were to play one of them daily, uh, which I currently don't, it would probably be The Division over Destiny. But that's just personal preference. Um, oh, yeah. So play what you want and have fun with what you want. Don't put other people down for what they like, unless it's something that the company is just like egregiously 
unmoral or the they're being unmoral on the game. Let people have their fun. Come on. Uh, and then Chaka did say, uh, shout out to the line on the original Battlefront 2, uh, where an Imperial officer said in a report that they are, quote unquote, spreading order when quelling the rebellion. That's true. So, There's a lot of like true. sentences or things that are, even if it's like a one-to-one -one remake or like a re-release of something, uh, they take out lines or switch lines. Like in the original Polgahannis in the song Savages, they originally say, let's go kill a few men. And in the new re releases, they say, let's go get a few men. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. And Which, I mean, I for a movie, for like Polgahannis, I get that. Especially because it's tailored to kids. So... Yeah. Like, like that I understand more than, like, some of the other stuff that, that you know, might get a little bit of a change. Like, like they're, I'm not going to get up in arms about a change over, like, anything, because, like, it's really not that big of a deal either way. It is what it um, is. Yeah, like, like, times change, things change, mm -hmm. people change, you know, and, and sometimes you have to adapt with the times, you know, it. That's just the, that's just the way it is. Like you have to you have to grow and become better mm -hmm. um, as a society. You know what which, I can't get you know... jive with is the shows that ended like twenty thirty years ago, like uh, Al Bundy or Friends, and people getting all cattywampus about it today. It's like the show has been off the air for like as long as I've been yeah. alive. Leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like like yeah, it's not you know, that's the thing. Like and you can you can pick and choose. Like if you're if you're a network, you can pick and choose what to air and what not to air. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's something overly offensive, just don't air it. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's it's that simple. Uh, networks uh, there never are get plenty, it. Though. Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of ways for people to find that content how they want to find it. You know. Yep. Uh, so, uh, Chocolaka says, "I hate ET where they digitally replace the guns with walkie talkies." Um. Yeah, I didn't know they did that. <laughs> yeah, I honestly didn't know that either. Um, <laughs> to to be totally honest, uh, I mean it goes either way. Again, ET marketed at kids, so like I I I can I can understand it from that from that standpoint. But like, it it is what it is. Like I'm at the same time it like doing that digital switch doesn't really change the outcome of the movie and how the movie plays out. Yeah. So. I, th I think if it did, then I'd be more, you know, like, what the heck? They changed the whole movie. But, you know. Like, who if shot it's... first? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but, I, but, I mean, if it's, you know, if it's something small that they do that, that doesn't really affect the movie and the plot and uh, change anything like that, then it's like, you know, whatever. It happens. <laughs> it's not, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. No. If that makes I mean... any sense. It's already yeah. been done. Can't get angry over it. It is what it is. I mean, I, if you've watched our... While we, we Before we get into the next topic, I'm playing a, a, the original 2003 trailer for the number one game on our list, which was KOTOR. Um, but if you've watched the 2XP podcast, which is tomorrow, I've talked several times how um, Mass Effect, the original, especially with the Legendary coming out, just the visuals don't hold up and they dogpile on me saying you can't compare it to today why because i can point out a thousand other 2007 games that look better than that what like why can't i point it out like i understand 2007 but i'm also comparing out of other 2007 games and just one i can think of off the top of my head that i've been reviewing stalker looks better than mass effect but mass effect has a better story i'm just saying the visuals don't hold up but apparently in some to some people, you can't talk bad about anything. And I love Bioware. Our first episode was a Bioware. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah, I mean, it's just, sometimes stuff just doesn't hold up. I mean, it, you know, and it's okay it, it, to it is say what that. it is. <laughs> yeah, like, I, even if you compare Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 2, I mean, clearly, Different. clearly, <laughs> Mass Effect 2 is, like, way better. Um, okay. So. Like, I mean, like, I myself, I love how Mass Effect 1 looks. Like, I, it doesn't bother me. Um, 
but it's like but if they want to change it and make it with like on par with two like i'm not gonna cry about it either like yeah i'm cool with that and i think you know I think mass the visuals like you said they don't bother me just when you compare them to two it's noticeable but i do think some of the uh gameplay in front of i've seen what they put out some of the yeah. gameplay stuff needs to be updated yeah for like i think i think you have to think about it from an understanding point of view and understand why the first mass effect was so different than mass effect 2 and that, that's because you were it was kind of a different a different bioware where they were focusing uh on the rpg element mm -hmm. um to them like because they were you know this was them coming off games like uh like neverwinter nights and and games like that or even kotor where you have dice rolls happening in the background Mm -hmm. uh, you're not seeing dice being rolled, but they're happening. Yep. Uh, where, you know, it's like, roll the dice, see if it's to hit. And, like, it's it was like a, they were trying to basically hodgepodge that with an actual action-based uh, combat system. So, like, you would sit there and shoot a dude in real time, but then, you know, but then if it actually hit, it would be a dice roll. So... I, I just don't think that jived in the minds of people when they were playing it. Yeah. Which which makes sense because it's like 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 dude I'm shooting him and I'm hitting him why isn't it doing anything so like I understand uh, where that comes from where it's like where it's like what what is with this yeah like why does it do that but but it's it was all it was all based on like dice rolls and Dungeons and Dragons type like in the background thinking. Yep. Um, whereas Mass Effect 2, they completely switched to an actual, you know, active combat, uh, real-time combat situation, uh, where, where, you know, you can pause for, like, a power. Yeah. Um, but the combat's still happening in real time beyond that, so, and I you know, it, that. yeah, so, and, and I, I think they, they moved it, uh, to a system that, that I think was better for everybody uh in general uh and and i think uh hit a broader audience uh yes. which is why i think mass effect 2 well part of the reason why mass effect 2 is more popular than the other games uh i mean the other reason is that it was a multi-platform game and you know yeah <laughs> the first one was only on xbox 360 but God. i can't wait so many people yeah, are gonna so experience i mean it is on multiple platforms now but so many people are going to experience mass effect one for the first time as it looked yeah. to us back then <sighs> yeah and and honestly mass effect one still might be the still might be the best story actually of them it just didn't have the gameplay to match yeah uh could you know um but like that story and mass effect one is really good um and that's why i still would recommend go and go and uh read those first books uh mm -hmm. the drew capricia and mass effect books because they're really good and i think the movies uh are on amazon prime amazon prime i think i mean i i own them but even the movies uh, give a lot of context as to what's happening. Yeah, those, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, this is the infamous scene from Force Unleash. I thought it was. I don't know why my brain said Force Awakens. It's the bringing down the uh, uh Star Destroyer. Yeah. I gotta play this game. It's it's good. I mean, it's I. I think it still holds up. Like it was just it was a fun action game, uh, where you basically got to use force powers like like that like, looks like you know fun. you're throwing around <laughs> tie fighters like come on it's you can't go wrong with that it it shows you like the true power of actually having a force user that you can just do anything with so that's what i kind of loved and kind of wish they would have expanded upon in um Oh, me, what is it? Fallen Order. 
it's like you felt like yeah. you were a force user but there was still like only in the cut only in boss battles or only in special yeah action sequence no i'm cow goddamn kestis i'm trying to revive the jedi order like come on yeah uh, yeah thanks for hanging out chakalaka go go watch uh there's a whole bunch of stuff on disney plus uh, the whole bunch of games. It, remember, if you want to hit up some good games, the uh, Humble Bundle uh, sale. Uh, the, the it's in the description. Uh, it's only for a day. I thought his niece was coming. Yeah, but thanks for hanging out, Chocolate. You you're awesome, and I can't wait to see what else you can review or write on Level One Gaming because man, your reviews. Whenever I read them, I'm, I'm like, okay. And then when I'm trying to write reviews, what would Chocolate do? That's what I base my stuff on because you just know what you're doing. Uh, so we've gone through the, for, of course, the top one was Kotor. Um, yeah, Knights of the Old Republic. I mean, it's it's one of the best RPGs of all time, let alone one of the best Star Wars games of all time. So, yeah, I mean it it fits it fits both of those uh, very well. I mean the characters are just so great in it, like each and every character from you know, from Karth to Bastila to HK-47 uh, to, you know, the main character, uh, whatever you name them, and and the big reveal about them. I mean, it's... Oh, my God, that twist ending. Oh. Yeah, it's it's so well done. I mean, it, it's... It might... Yeah, that's... It's one of, it's one of the best Star Wars stories ever told. Uh, yeah. In any... In any genre. In any medium. Yeah, um, I think so, yeah. So, yeah. Nice Old Republic, like, it, it belongs at number one, for sure. It, it's, like, four, four, five, ten dollars to pick up uh, KOTOR 1 and 2, honestly. Uh, yeah, it's... You, and it's from that age of Bioware that people consider the golden age when, I think, Dragon Age Origins, Mass Effect 1, KOTOR, Drade Empire, Neverwinter, like, from that, just... Mwah golden era so mm -hmm. you know the gameplay is going to be pretty good the story is going to be pretty dang good and you're going to have a good time and you can play it in a weekend they're not long that's what she said but they're really good and they're jam-packed with stuff now this is the big yeah, boy because there is Yeah, I'm going to say 80 or not more because then you got all these kinds of spinoffs. There's tons of Star Wars games. We're not going to get into all of them. We're just going to look at uh, what we know and talk about them. And if you guys want us to talk about anything else Star Wars related on this May the 4th be with you, uh, let us know. Yeah. So I'm going to cut out probably anything that's like... Uh, why don't I want to go by date? Where's the date? Oh, these are all standalone. Okay. Table games, I think we can cut out. Pinball. I just yeah, I have it. Yeah. Oh, 90s. Shadows of the Empire. Yeah, what? This is the most confusing list I've ever seen. Yeah, I noticed that. I mean, honestly, I think we've covered the the major ones. Yeah. For the oh, most let's, part, like. Let's look at cancel games. Project Ragtag. Oh, was that thirteen thirteen? I don't think that. I think that might have been the that might have been the Amy Heading one, perhaps. I think so. Twenty fifteen. Two thousand seventeen. There was a demo. October demo. 2017, it looks like it was cancelled. Huh. Yeah. Visceral. All in order. Okay. Watch a Craig tag. I don't I know there was I believe that's it. Oh, 1313. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Mm hmm I think Rag tag. I think it went by another name, but I can't remember the name. Project 
Blue whale or something. Yeah, There's another one like that. Battle. A lot of these, man, would Old Republic 3? Mm -hmm. That would have been cool. Comics, man. There, there's Star Wars, the only universe that I know that is almost as big is maybe Avatar. Like a James Cameron Avatar, because they spent millions building a world that they never used. Mm hmm. Uh, well, apparently, there's still movies going to come out for that. Uh, yeah. Supposedly. I think supposedly. people are kind of uh, over James Cameron. Especially, I know oh, people here. 100%. Yeah. People here in Alberta, because he came here and toured the oil sands and said, shame on you for digging up the earth. Uh, and then flew back home in his jet. And people are like, boy, if you don't get the hell out of here, never return. <laughs> so, I wish this was a. a yeah, there's. Uh, so, Project Ragtag was the Amy Hennig game. Uh, okay. Was, yeah. Oh, God, that game. That and 1313. Maybe with the, the success of Fallen Order, we might see it eventually come back. Maybe Not with Amy Hennig, of course, but we'll, maybe. Uh, I, th I think we'll see maybe. Like a branch maybe of it. Some other, yeah, maybe some other studios taking a risk with those games now. Maybe they'll, they'll let them do that. I mean, we're definitely seeing a second Jedi Fall in Order. Because oh. uh, they've confirmed that, I'm pretty sure. Without a doubt. I mean, the way... The way it ended, at the very end, they introduce the big bad of the entire Star Wars universe. But you only see him for 15 minutes, if not even, actually. Probably mm -hmm. like six minutes. Oh, okay. And this is when EA said, oh, nobody wants to play single-player games. Like, nobody does that anymore. Come on. Yeah, so, actually, uh, just uh, for just for a little bit of uh, clarity, I do have a list uh, that's on IGN of the top 10 best-selling Star Wars games. Oh, okay. Uh so oh, number I... one is Battlefront from 2015. Oh, oddly I enough, I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Uh, I think that's because it, it that game sold super well, and I think that's because it was it was Battlefront coming back after uh, thought to be dead for so long that they, that we would never see another Battlefront game. That's true. And that's what people were wanting. Um, okay. But then the the second top selling game is in fact Jedi Fallen Order. Wow. When people don't play single player games, okay. Yeah. So I think that definitely it it had to open up uh, the eyes there at EA. I've been like, you know what? Maybe we were wrong. <laughs> uh so number three is Star Wars Battlefront Two from uh, yeah. 2017. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The, <laughs> it's like the least even that. even even after the loot box stuff, it still sold extremely well. Yeah. Um. So I I think that I think what that shows is that uh, even if you have a big hubbub of negative stuff happening on Twitter. Uh, in the game community, that that doesn't always translate to yeah. how the broad spectrum of people actually feel about something. Uh, I think also Star Wars is is like Marvel, though, where they're very unique, where mm -hmm. you don't, if you just watch the movies and you're, you might buy the game because you like the movies and you want to, you're yeah. not necessarily a gamer or like me, who's never watched the new movies, but you like the games, and probably, I honestly don't know if I'll watch the new movies. I might, but it's not going to influence. I'll probably buy these games no matter, or not buy, but like play these games no matter what. Star Wars mm -hmm. and Marvel are very like, you don't have to like one or the other, but you maybe you want to experience both. Because there's probably a ton of people who 
don't play video games that play Marvel's Avengers. Yeah, and I mean, you have... It's also one of those things where it's like, you know, Star Wars is so recognizable that if if you're on a shelf and it's the holiday season, you're going to have, you know, that parent come in and be like, what do I get my kid for, for Christmas? They like yep. Star Wars. Hey, look, there's a new Star Wars game. I'll buy that. Yeah. You know. That's true, yeah. So... Because you know they're not gonna they're not gonna care how good it is. Um, you like you know, Star Wars? Here you go. Yeah, exactly. They're gonna they're gonna hope it's good. They're and that their kid has a good time with it, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're gonna be like, "Hey, I got you the new Star Wars game. Have fun." Yep. Um, that sort of thing. So, so yeah, I, I think that's uh, that's where that goes uh, as far as that. Uh, but the number four. Is actually Lego Star Wars the Complete Saga. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. Which makes a lot of sense. I mean, the Lego Star Wars games have always done well. Uh, and that one being the complete package. Uh, plus, I mean, they're co-op games. So, you know, you can play them multiplayer. You can play them by yourself. They're, they're, pretty, much, uh, they're pretty much games for everybody. Uh, which is a good thing. So. Yep. Uh, and then just to quickly go down the list, number five is the Force Unleashed, uh, the the original Force Unleashed, okay. uh, which obviously it was it was pretty big when it came out, so that yeah. doesn't surprise me. Um, number six is the original Battlefront Two, mm. the two thousand five one. Uh, seven is Lego Star Wars Two, uh, okay. based on the original trilogy of movies. Uh, number eight is the Lego Star Wars based on the prequel trilogy. Um, and then number nine is, uh, Star Wars Battlefront from 2004. Oh. Uh, and ten is actually Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. Wow, oh, okay. Uh, which, which was pretty big during the N64 era, so. Yeah. Uh, that's not surprising. A lot of people bought that game, uh, on N64, so. Uh, I, I mean, I'm kind of surprised to see it on the top ten just because it was so long ago that, you know, it was obviously gaming as a hobby gets gets more popular every year. Yeah. So it's it's not surprising to see newer games at the top. Yeah. Uh, so something that came out in uh, like Shadows of the Empire was like ninety six or ninety eight, something like that. Uh, it's it's just surprising to see based on that that uh, just when it came out that it is that high up. But I'm surprised but yeah, it is. that Star Wars kinetic isn't on there oh the the connect one yeah i the one with you know, the dance game in the middle of it <laughs> yeah it didn't do great um as someone who was sold it <laughs> when it came out it didn't it didn't do well uh i think at that i think at that point uh people were kind of over the gimmick that was connect. Yeah. Uh, if I remember right, it might have got pushed a little bit later than they wanted it to, and it just it didn't do well. I, I don't I don't think that was the Star Wars game they were looking for. No. But like so, you were saying with the the Christmas stuff, I'm surprised parents didn't pick it up. Oh, we could play this together or some or grandparents even. Hmm. Cause didn't it did it come free with some consoles for a while? Like one of the bundled in games. Um, it might have. I can't remember. Because I feel like because I know it might have, but I'm not. Yeah, again, well, I don't know. they did. They did that that R two D two console that had the C three PO controller. But I, if I remember right, I don't think it actually came with the game. I think you had to buy the game separate, uh, which is why people didn't buy the game. Oh. But. But that's that's how I remember it. That's not necessarily how it happened. I could be wrong. Yeah. Because uh, I, I, so... I feel like in Canada there might have been a bundle or two like that, but I'm not a thousand percent sure. Because apparently every... I mean, we know this. Every area has its own bundles, packages, and all that stuff slapped together. In Canada, we weird over here, man. We really are. Yeah, I'm not. 
It's possible I'm wrong. It no. might have come with the game. I don't think you're wrong. I just it might have been region select because we've definitely had that before. Yeah, it's yeah, it's possible too. Like I'm I'm looking it up now and I see a picture, but the picture is not the US version. So Oh uh, yeah. I don't know if and it came with the game. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't it's it's hard to say. But even if it came with the game, I don't think the game did well. Yeah. Uh, just it was I mean, part of me wants to find yeah, a copy the now for like collection's mm. sake. <laughs> but god, I can't imagine it did well at all. Okay, yeah, so I'm looking at the US version of it on Best Buy's website. It did come with the game. Uh, okay. So I was wrong on that. No, you weren't um, wrong, you just did. No. That's true. Yeah, I I couldn't re- I couldn't remember. I mean it's you know, that was so years ago. ago. Yeah. I mean, uh, we've been in quarantine <laughs> for like twenty years now, so Sure feels like it, yeah. <laughs> but uh But yeah, so but yeah, it did come out a bit later. Uh, the reviews were not good. Uh, I can looking imagine. at it, uh, it has a Metacritic score of fifty-five. Mm-hmm. Um, Gamespot gave it a five. IGN gave it a five point five. So was okay, uh, definitely swimming in fives. Higher than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like fifty yeah, percent is was... really good. <laughs> well. For a game like that? Video, video <laughs> games are weird and where yeah. in most things like a five would be like, okay, that's that's average, but in game speak it's like, nah, it's not good. Right. Um it's which I, I don't understand where that narrative came from, but like that's just kinda that, how it is. That's why I, I try that's why I do retrospectives because I don't like to give numbers. Uh, yeah. I just I feel like when people say, oh, Never. like, 72 is bad. Excuse me, 72 is like a, a B, B. That's passing. As long as you pass them, baby, well, that's all that matters. 72 is really a C, but still, it's it's still passing. When I went uh, to school, it yeah. was a B. <laughs> was it? Yeah. Canada, we... I don't think it was. No, it was. Well, I mean, that you Canadian... are Canada. So. Canadian system is different. <laughs> That is true. That is true. You are you are Canadian. Uh, uh, it might be live different. In our, our home and native land. It may be different now because like every ten years they they shifted and moved things down. But when I was in school, yeah, seventy, man, seventy two was yeah, good. So, yeah. So in the U.S., that's a C because uh, uh-huh. the eighties are B's and the nineties are A's. Hey. And then we don't even do E's. Uh, D's are the sixties. And then anything beyond that is an F. Yeah. Which come For on. Failure. So not hard. I think that's probably that's that's probably why people think a fifty is a bad score. Because in the United States in school, fifty is an F. So fifty's passing still here. Like you're not it's not the great, but at least you're gonna pass. Yeah, it's in the United States, it's an F for failure. Now I understand why the U.S. has so many problems. <laughs> it's all coming to me now. So many. <laughs> I love all my U.S. friends, but I, I see it. I see it. Okay. We're uh, an interesting bunch. We're pretty much, we're pretty much bred for failure from the from the beginning. Um, I didn't say it. <laughs> look, I mean. <laughs> they want they want you to do well in school, uh, but they they don't want to give the school resources to help you do well. So, because right. <laughs> uh, you know, standardized testing is the way to go. Uh, of course, yeah, yeah, that always works out. Uh huh. Yeah, because you know that works for everybody and not just uh, a select group of people who are good at taking tests. But hey, right. what do I know? Good at regurgitating uh, stuff. Yeah, good at remembering stuff, uh, yeah. remembering facts. Um, like, yeah, like that's no, it, it does. Uh. Yeah, that's and a whole... the more the older I get, like the more I realize how 
screwed up that stuff is. Um, mm -hmm. Because when I was younger, because, like, I, you know, I, I was, you know, I, I was, as long as I was in class and paid attention, uh, I would do fine. Because, like, I was good at, you know, I was good at test taking and stuff. Like, none of that stuff bothered me. But, like, but I, I know other people who aren't, like, they're not stupid people. Like, they're smart. Um, or they just are smarter in different areas than mm -hmm. I am. Because, like, I'm, like, I'm dumb in a lot of technical, like, skills. Like, if, you know, if you want me to look at a car, I'll, like, look at a car and then be confused. Um, but, you know, but, like, you know, I, I know people who, who weren't, you know, who weren't the best, like, at, like, math or science or anything, but then, like, you put them in front of a car and they're, you know, and they know everything about it and do this, that, like, and I'm just mm -hmm. like, I'm just like, I don't know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's it's, a whole, um... that's a whole other language, like, I, I, I think... It just goes to show that different people are good at different things. Like, not everybody needs to be... And the, the school systems tend to try to fit everybody into a singular box. Yep. Where, really, in society, we, there are multiple boxes. Yep. Uh, and people can be in different boxes, and that's okay. I Yeah. Because, you know, we're all different, and I guess this is off-topic, but sort of on-topic. Yeah, I went yeah. to a technical uh, trade school and I did a printing program and, you know, you think with the arts or base program, you would go based on a portfolio, but now it was people who uh, had good grades. And let me tell you, I there was a lot of smart people in that class, but they couldn't think of designs or basically draw straight lines to save their lives. And I'm like, why are you here? Yeah. It's because you're smart doesn't mean you know everything. Just because people call yeah, you dumb right. doesn't mean you're actually dumb. Yeah, exactly. And and I like so at least the school system around me had pretty much like after your sophomore year, you made a choice. You either stayed the course in what was uh quote unquote like a like a more college prep based thing that was like these are this this normal school is going to keep you going towards college uh but we also had a technical school around here uh which was the jvs which taught more technical skills um and pretty much after your sophomore year you pretty much had to make that decision whether you want to do one or the other um and like honestly there were a lot of a lot of kids who just didn't do well in the in the regular school that moved over to the JVS, and I know one that ended up being uh, like the valedictorian of the JVS, and Jesus. like I was very shocked when when I found that out at, at our graduation. You know, like like uh, because it, it you know he it was someone that you know acted out a lot in yeah. regular school, and that's probably just because regular school didn't work for them. You know, yeah. uh, and instead of like, instead of trying to figure out like, well, why is he, why is he acting out in this way? He's a uh, or like basic, or yeah, yeah, exactly. Like why, why is he causing problems for teachers or being the class clown or whatever? It just became, well, uh, he's a problem. We'll stick him in the corner, give him suspensions, give him detention. Mm -hmm. You know that kind of that kind of stuff. Instead of you know figuring out that. Oh, maybe he's maybe this just isn't his lane, and maybe we need to figure out what his lane is and mm -hmm. set him on a course to make him successful elsewhere. And I don't blame teachers um, because I mean they get the bare minimum and are expected to do yeah a lot. Yeah, Some it's, teachers. It's I should say. It, yeah, it, it's completely underfunded, um, or a lot of teach like when I was in high school, a lot of my teachers were old. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they were in a system that, that essentially they, they had been doing the same thing for like 30 years and like, you know, it's, it's hard to readjust, yeah. uh, you know, to, to any changing and, and even like, you know, when I was in school, like 
even this stuff wasn't even talked about then, and this was and this was like early two thousands. So, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully, hopefully, generations beyond me will be better because we're starting to have these discussions. But yeah, who knows? Just be better. Be better, and uh, not you that has been labeled a problem child, but just be better, everybody. <laughs> Everywhere in life, please just be better. Yeah, agreed. Not not everybody not everybody fits in the same box, but uh, no. you you know everybody ha everybody has a box. Mm -hmm. It just might not all be the same, you know. So just find just find out what works for you, and don't and get roll discouraged. With it. Uh, definitely, definitely you'll you'll find your way. Yeah. This is the best. Okay, Battlefront Food, Dark Forces, Hi. Man, there's... Yeah. They really get repetitive after... There's... Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, I, I think most of the lists are gonna be pretty similar. There's so many games, but so little variation on what... I mean, I will give people credit... Some of these early 80s games are probably impossible to find. Star Wars on the Famicom, arcade Star Wars, uh, my Discord pinging me. Shush, Discord. Um, a lot of this is probably very hard to find. Yeah. At the same time. No Revenge of the Sith? Come oh, on, that was a great game. PlayStation 2. And phone, I guess. And phone Game Boy Advance, okay. What up? Yeah. So so many shovelware uh, DS games too, and Wii games. Yeah, so <laughs> godly amount. Back when the DS was fairly new, I started to go for like a complete DS collection. Ooh, that was a mistake. Yeah, I bet. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of Barbie games in there, isn't it? <laughs> uh, there was, but well, thankfully I had not bought a lot of those yet. But uh. But, you know what, at the same time, I did come across a lot of, like, games that I normally wouldn't have played and were, like, gems, so, um, I can't say that, uh, but yeah, there was, a uh, a lot of games that were just, you know, shovelware, and that, you know, that, that era, that, you know, end of, you know, PS2, Xbox, GameCube, uh, into like the first half of like the 360 era, that was the era where all yeah. the shovelware was like, like it was it was because that was like the era of like everything needs a tie-in, you know everything needs a tie-in game, and we also need to put this tie-in game out on every system possible, which you know that means that means Xbox, GameCube, PS2. Uh, Game Boy or DS, depending on, on the time frame. And then, you know, and it's yeah. like, you have all these systems, obviously different specs on them, so you have different teams doing different systems, so you're going to have variances uh, based on the hardware uh, for, for one of them, mm -hmm. and then variants on, and like, the Game Boy game could be a completely different game whatsoever than what's available on console, so it's like, that's true. It's <laughs> yeah, it, it it was it was weird. Um, I think very few console ports to handheld worked out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Although surprisingly, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, those Still. are quality ports. Yeah, those are quality. Still hold up. That's true. There's because all I can think of is. Uh, Batman Begins 2005. It had a Game Boy port, and it was yeah. the Game Boy port is better than the console game, oh, for at least what I've played, because it's uh, it's that more tight, yeah. compact gameplay, and it's just a little bit better, and it's shorter. Yeah. You can't beat the good handheld. I mean, Professor Layton, that's my jam. I'm not smart enough for it, I, but damn. <laughs> I'm telling you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it out there, and this could be controversial, but the Game Boy Advance might be the best console ever. 
Oh, <laughs> in handheld just or ever? Ever. Oh. Um, just the lineup of games that it had. Uh, whether it was like not only just original games, but ports from uh, like Super Nintendo, uh, etc. Like it just had so many good games available for it that it might just be the best overall. Oh. Ever. So. Yeah. But that. hey. People can debate that if they want, but hell yeah, Game Boy Advance. It did a lot. Game Boy Advance had some bangers, man. Game Boy Advance. Had... I can't wait to get into. Like we're, I we probably have to break that up into two episodes, two three episodes, to be honest, because there's just so much on those systems. But I can't wait to get into those. Yeah, uh, I know the Flames PS2 said, one yeah, is gonna take us forever. Flames just said GBA was fire. GBA. Flames or knows. Oh, so so this is a GameSpot video released today, and they're just we're just gonna I'm gonna have it in the background while we keep talking. 1983 Star Wars, eh? Look at that, sexy. That arena. <laughs> no, I totally see what they're going it. for though. <laughs> like it, it's uh, it's the it's the thing that Luke used to train. Yeah. The, <laughs> like I mean, it doesn't look like a fantastic game. I mean, I. Star Wars droids. Yeah. Man, these games... I just miss. I shouldn't say I miss, because I, I thoroughly enjoyed Fallen Order. I just miss... Yeah. When games were complete. I don't mind DLC, but you didn't have to rely on the DLC. And Star Wars is probably one of the most exploited series or different types of games that I've ever probably ever seen i you know i haven't dived into the star trek games but star wars there's literally like i said a game for every single thing you could want yeah i mean you gotta think though anything that's popular yeah is gonna get that exploit that exploitation like that anything that's mainstream popular because i'm like there's yeah. tons mm -hmm. of video games that they should have been more popular final fantasy should have all kinds. Of, I mean, Final Fantasy does have all kinds of stuff. I was going to say, it kind of does have all kinds of stuff. But it, not <laughs> um, as much as Star Wars, because there's oh, no, 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 I mean, no strategy games. I mean, Star Wars are, are not what, what I think Final Fantasy is strategy, but there's no like StarCraft game on it. There's no but, but, Diablo yeah, I mean, game. But look at like, look at like Marvel. Uh, Marvel's yeah. kind of in that same boat. It has. Uh, pretty much every genre of game ever yeah. has, you know, there's some Marvel property that belongs in that box, you know. So, yeah. or it's yeah, there's there's, there are properties, but it's it's there's not a lot of them because um, yeah. there's not a lot that that were mainstream enough. One of my favorite Marvel so. games, coincidentally, is a DS game. I did a retrospective on it. it was the Thor God of Thunder. Because I did play a bit of the console version. And that was awful. Any of those movie tie-in games that are usually on console are awful. But the, the DS one. I, man, that was good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's it was weird. Like, some of those... Some of those DS games that you would think were just going to be trash were just like, you know what? This is actually all right. Mm hmm. Um, I think that's why yeah, I've seen remember... like Ace Attorney come back with a vengeance. Oh, Phoenix Wright was great. Phoenix, uh, it still holds up, man, though. Yes, and I am I am so glad that they ported that to like modern consoles, as dumb as that sounds. No, because. Um, I'm. I but, can't but wait for the Professor Layton one. But it's all like it's all like high quality art, like yes. like anime art. So you can easily port that to a bigger screen. Uh, yeah. Whereas like some of those games, like some of those games on DS, there's no way you could port them just because you know, yeah, just because ugly. of the way they look. Um, yeah, it'd be it'd be real bad. Like ugly um, and the two screens. But, yeah. 
Yeah, you you definitely have to adjust. Like like I know what was I? I was listening to some podcasts. They were talking about uh, what else like Konami could come out with, and and someone suggested that they should do they should bring you know the GBA and DS Castlevania games. Uh, they should port them, which I yes. agree. Um, although it'd be it would they would definitely have to do some uh, changes to the DS ones to get them. Uh, oh, yeah. ported. But the but the three GBA games could easily uh come to, you know, like your Nintendo oh, eShops yeah. or, you know, as a digital release, as a digital collection. Like I would like those are I'd buy them. <laughs> I would. I, I mean, don't even have a I switch love, and I'd buy them. <laughs> I love Ario Sorrow uh yes. a lot. Uh and yeah. man, this is definitely going off the reservation, but like, like Aria Sorrow, uh, Metroid Zero Mission got me through my senior year of high school uh, on the GBA. So, <laughs> can't uh, I can. I mean, those games are so. That's when Castlevania was still like a revered series too, because I was just mm-hmm. off the back of like uh, Symphony of the Night, which I'm glad. Yeah that when I had Patreon, somebody suggested to play that because I had never played it before. That game slaps. <laughs> yeah, and basically any the game way. they made any game they made that was a that was off of the that, that was basically Symphony of the Night mm-hmm. uh, with maybe added stuff uh, <laughs> uh, off, the, off the back of, you know, off the formula that Symphony of the Night had was really good. Um, you know, the th- the three for Game Boy, the maybe two or three for DS, I can't remember if it was two or three of them, um, mm-hmm. were all really good. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like just top quality games regardless of what they were on. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then like, it just kind of, well, they, ch- they, then they went into like the Lords of Shadow stuff. Yeah. And we're, we're just like, it's like, we must make this a high production thing. It's like, no, you really it. don't. like. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, I get what they were trying to do with it. Uh, but it's like, you don't know, like, that's not, that's yeah. not what Castlevania fans want, though. Like, yeah, uh, there was, there was definitely a time like between like probably 2007 and 2010 uh you know maybe a little before maybe a little after where everybody was like we need this to like become the next big thing the next big mainstream thing and they tried to make it they basically tried to make their game cool but in but trying to make it cool just made their game suck yeah um and or or just, at the very least, be mediocre. They were um, very cheesy. Cheesy, generic. That point on, yeah. Like, it's yeah, it's just like it. It kind of took away anything that was unique from a lot of different franchises, and and just made them just not desirable games. And and a lot of game and 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 you can see the what happened because of that. Yeah. We lost, and I mean, this is a topic we talked about before, we lost, like, the double A, the B-tier game, mm-hmm. for a long time, and uh, because those companies brought out games that just weren't really that great, so they didn't sell great, so then they stopped making those games, mm-hmm. uh, because they knew they wouldn't sell, which is so, shame. which created, like, this hole that indie developers were like, well, we're making cool games. Yeah. Uh, so they filled that hole. So that's, I mean, really it facilitated the rise of the indie game, which which is a good thing. Um, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm an indie game developer. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but it, it's it's just, it was, it was a weird time. It was like a weird time of transition. And had they just kind of, I mean, maybe, maybe if they... It's hard to it's hard to say because I mean, without you know the right data and facts and everything, but it's like maybe if you just stayed with you know what you've been doing. Yeah, I, it's always I hate, the big what. Yeah, but I but I also hate to be like, 
well, maybe you guys should keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, we obviously... Innovation in the industry obviously makes everybody better eventually. Yeah. So... Yeah. So, I mean, because they straight off the, the path for a little bit, we did see a rise of indie games. You know, so was it a bad thing? Maybe not. No. You know, it's... It's, it's like one say. of those things. Yeah, like like I, I would like to say, yeah. Uh but but I also want a want a good damn Castlevania game again, like ah. Yeah. I you know, and then we'll have to dive into Konami soon. Cause I, I we have all have very strong thoughts about that. <laughs> yeah, and I mean it's 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 one. Of, it's weird. Like it's. I don't know the right answer. You know. I don't know if there is because uh, we, yeah. in hindsight, can sit and be, uh, say all these like, oh, it was great that Nintendo bailed out the gaming industry in the eighties. But what if yeah. they didn't? Would we still have recovered, or would we have been better off? Like, it's it's hard to say things like that because you just don't know. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, even even from that example, like, like if Nintendo doesn't come around, is then then because if Nintendo's not there, we don't get Sonic. Yeah. Because Sonic was literally created because they were like, we need a mascot that's like Mario. Uh, but then but we wouldn't get Balan either. So, I. <laughs> 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 no Balan in this world. I would be okay with that maybe maybe but yeah it's, it's a big what if i think moving forward with star wars i would love and i it'll never happen because disney has a a force chokehold on it is like a focus interactive style because you know focus they do greedfall they do a whole bunch their yeah. kind of publishing style of a star wars because it's gonna be story heavy not so much for the thematics. Basically, I wanted another like return to form, like with Kotor and all that, but done in a yeah. double B or a double A B style kind of game. Yeah, mm. I don't think yeah, it'll happen. I, I totally be up for that. Um, I, I, you know, I think it'd be fun to see to see some diff like see some different genres happening, uh, just in Star Wars. Like, like say you gave uh, Frogwares. Uh, who do the Sherlock Holmes games? Like, Ooh. what if you what if you did a Star Wars detective story? Um, it could you fit. know it's it's an adventure game, but it's just in the Star Wars universe. Like, I mean, I'd be cool with that. Uh, oh. Like, that's the kind of stuff that I'd lo I'd love to see. Like, like just them like at, go go to like these different developers that do uh, really cool types of games in different genres and be like, hey. Make us a game. Yeah. Um. Do, do I see that happening? No. No. But, uh, Disney that will would never be, let that happen. Yeah, that that would be really awesome. Um, because I think, I think Star Wars has so much, so much lore, uh, to the point where it could fit anywhere. Really. Yeah. Like, like what if what if you wanted to make like a like a a civilization type strategy game? just set in the Star Wars universe. That would you be know? so cool. It'd be awesome. And I you could even it. have, like, you could have different leaders from different eras. You know? Like... That would be awesome. Like, do it. You know? Damn! I, that sounds so good. Oh my god. <laughs> now you get my hopes up. You could... I mean, you could even take... You can take an, different eras, like, you could take, like, the Clone Wars era and mm -hmm. make an XCOM game out of it. Oh, an you XCOM know, like, style. You can, so good. You can take, like, these these small battles and stuff, and or small skirmishes, and turn them into, like, an XCOM game set in the Star Wars universe. Like, like why aren't we seeing, like, that's... If I were, you know, if, if I were, if Lucas... Arts, video games, or whatever the heck 
their label is right now <laughs> that is handling that stuff was like, what would you do with it? I would be like, find some developers that can do our games in different genres and see what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't have to be... They don't all have to be these massive, like, 100-hour experiences. You can do, like... You could do a 20-hour, like, short-form XCOM-type game. See mm -hmm. how well it does. It does good, you do more. It doesn't do well... Oh, well, we have this cool game, you know, yeah. that people can play, you know? I mean, judging by the list of games they have, they're, they, they're not afraid to take risks. Because there's just they, tons of branches off weird stuff. Oh, my God. You could say they weren't afraid. Yeah, that's true. Then Disney because came in and said... Because a lot of those games... All of it. Yeah. A lot of those games were done... In previous eras, where it was Lucas Arts yeah. uh, in charge, so. But you know, Disney is Disney is starting to branch out. They are starting to get other developers. I don't think, I don't think the EA exclusivity is there anymore. I hope not. I I have so, a big problem with EA, <laughs> but anybody that's talked to me knows that. So. No, and, and I, I get it, but. But I think I, I think even with EA they could do different stuff. Uh, they could do I don't know. Let's just uh, let's let's say they they go to Joseph Forrest and say, "Hey, uh, you're making cool co-op games. How would you like to do that in the Star Wars universe?" Yeah, and you know, be that and that have them make would be cool. But we know they're not going to do yeah. that. At least not right now. Ever going to do that. No. No. And, and I mean, that's just an example of something cool that they could do. God, that would um, be so cool. Like, and, and obviously, like, like for a lot of people, like, It Takes Two was great. Oh, um, that was so good. And from what I saw of it, it, it looked great. It was uh, really good. Yeah. So, it, it, it's... Now, yeah. I... I think they just need these companies need to I mean my my big problem with EA has always been let's fire 200 people but our CEO gets like a hundred million dollar bonus is that's what I'm yeah and the I mean EA and almost that's... has a bigger graveyard than Google which man Google yeah, really does not hold it. anything but it, but if you look at the numbers yeah Sony's even worse with showing oh, Sony studio. I don't even bother with Sony anymore, man. <laughs> like, I'm like, come on, guys. And and I I think, but I, I, that's a problem. That's not. It's not endemic of necessarily the corporation. It's just corporations in general, True. unfortunately, all have that same issue. It's not a you look box. at any of. It's a surprise mechanic. You look at any of the big companies, you look at EA, you look at Activision, you look at Sony, you look oh. at even, at, like, you know, every everybody, you know, wants to be friends with Microsoft right now. Oh, which, they're, like, I'm waiting hey, for that shoe to drop, because they can't keep this up forever. They're making great moves right now, but we've seen in the past, uh, where at the, like, at the beginning of the Xbox One era, where they did, had barely any studios because they were closing them. Mm-hmm. They so, were bad. So, you know, like, like they've been guilty of it too, you know, there's, and that, that's just, that's, that's every big company does that. And it's, a, mm -hmm. and it sucks. Like it, it, like it legitimately sucks. Yeah. But like, I, I, I don't know what to do to fix that. It's, I don't it's think just we big, can. Yeah, like there's nothing an individual can do other than, other than maybe vote with your wallet. If you, if you're if if you're not happy with a company, don't buy stuff from them. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, like especially when, when company at at the bottom line, the company is looking to make more money, and if they're not making more money, then maybe they'll pay attention. Hopefully, but but then at the same time, 
if they're not making money, they just blame the developers and then let them go. Yeah. So it's it's a mess. <laughs> yeah, it's it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's. I think we are reaching a point though that some I feel something big happening. I don't know what it is. It's not going to be like the '80s. We're way past that point, but some. Yeah. Something's gonna happen, and I just don't know what it is. I don't know if it's gonna be good or bad, but it's you know that feeling like something is, especially with E three and people kind of like turning away and being like, oh, is this thing really relevant? Some re relevant something's gonna happen. I just don't know what it is, but whatever it yeah, is, you, we support it, or we yeah. E three is kind of like it's it's such a weird beast now, especially that we're about to get to that. Like it's a month away at this point. Oh my like it's, god! It's, You're right. E yeah, E three, E three is that weird thing where it's like, as as a as just like a, a a fan of the games industry in general, and and just love someone who loves video games like, like E three has very much and so many times been like my Christmas, where yeah. it's like, like <laughs> I'm the nerd that's gonna sit there and I'm gonna watch all these conferences. And being like, yeah, show me more. Uh, give me more of that that visual serotonin. Uh, you know, I, I want to see I want to see all these games. I want to consume these games. Give me these games. I mean, there's uh, some great moments know, that have come from E3. I mean, Shenmue three but, before we knew that was going to be a disaster. Keanu Reeves coming out, and that's just recent stuff. Yeah, like, but it's like, but at the same time. Like, the rational, like, person in me is also like, but do we really need it, need, like, yeah. a week of this, or, or can we just, like, you know, or can yeah. these companies just announce things when they want to announce things, because, you know, everything's on the internet, and you can just do a Nintendo Direct, and get yeah. to your audience that way, like, and like, 90% of totally... it leaks before the show anyway. Yeah, like, I, I totally see it from both directions. Yeah. Um. Like, like the like the old school person in me still wants just a week of it and to just consume it all in that you know in those three days of conferences. Uh. But I completely understand the amount of effort that it takes to do that. Mm. Um. For not just from a from the publisher standpoint, but from a developer standpoint, uh, because having to make a demo cuts into your actual development time uh, because you have to, you know, slice out a piece of that and that's not easy mm -hmm. uh, necessarily. So it's, it, it's definitely going to take time away from that. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, like yeah. there's no right answer, but I completely understand why they don't think E3. Why well, a lot of people don't think E3 is relevant anymore. Um, yeah. Not not only that. I mean, there's you know a whole lot of just like bad decisions behind the scenes uh, from the ESA and stuff. And and you know there was the the journalism late leaks oh, God, uh, that happened. That. Where it's like, come on, guys! Like you literally just had it sitting on your website. Like mm -hmm. like how stupid is that? Like I mean. Yeah. Uh, that's just that was just plain stupidity. Um especially especially for a company that works in the in a technology based industry. It's it baffles my mind <laughs> how something like that happens, but somebody fell asleep at the steering is. wheel there. That's, that's yeah, like someone was like, ah, we'll just put it here, no one will pay attention to it. And it's like, no, it's the internet. Someone will find it. Yeah. Even if you say no, they no no they will look at what happened to uh, Philip Mewson. He stole one review, and people he dared the internet to oh, find no. more, and they did. <laughs> and they did, yeah, exactly. They destroyed like, that man. <laughs> like don't don't think, don't think people ain't gonna find out. They're gonna find out. People will always find out. Um, I think we we're kind of like reaching a pinnacle of our, our Star Wars talk because there's yeah yeah we could go into more but like I said there's like 80 90 games that are known there's tons of spin-off yeah, games mean, 
You could be here forever. I, I think I think at the end of the day we talked about the important ones. Yeah. Um I I one that I that I will give a, a pretty good honorable mention here, uh, that can no longer be played to this day is Star Wars Galaxies. Uh I've heard of it. Star yeah. Wars Galaxies was so cool back in the day. Uh it was like it was essentially living in the Star Wars universe, uh, in a sense. Like, you couldn't, like, like, it was even very hard to become a Jedi. Like, I, it was, like, a, a, a huge process. Uh, as, you know, maybe that's how it should be. Uh, but, uh, so, like, there weren't very many of them around. So when you saw them, it's like, oh my god, there's a Jedi. Uh. Oh. But yeah, it was. It, so it was definitely uh, sixteen. I yeah, I'm sure there. there this is there a might game. Be like a, it, it has like a fan made, and people have brought it back, kind of like um, cities, city heroes, or whatever that was. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I would be surprised if there aren't some like private servers out there somewhere of people playing it. Oh um, yeah, I mean, but yeah, this is the Bioware game, kind of. Not really, but <laughs> yeah, it yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's, it's super interesting. Like, oh. like it, I, I remember having some fun with it back in the day. Uh, so day shout out to Star Wars Galaxy. Boy. You know, I mean, it was what year was Galaxies? Like two thousand two, so. <clears throat> You see that year come out. Okay, so I'd have been a junior in high school at that point. So young boy. <laughs> Very young man. So, yeah, there's just so yeah. much Star Wars content, so much Star Wars media, so many Star Wars games, books, movies. I mean movies are there's tons of movies. But yeah, the games that TV go... shows now. TV shows, exactly. The games go forever. The movies go forever. The TV shows. I I gotta watch Clone Wars because I I. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. It looks so good. Star Wars is a very interesting series, a very interesting franchise on the gaming front because we just don't know which way it's gonna swing. It could literally go RPG shooter uh, strategy we don't know what the next Star Wars game is going to be and I'm very interested to see what it's going to be especially with how good Fallen Order was for sure yeah it, and it could go it could go everywhere you're right make yeah. them all I hope so make them all I give my be, suggestions I wouldn't be opposed to that dip into some of the other lore that we never got to uh, experience yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's a ton of different angles you can take. There's a ton of different characters. Um, there's the the sky's the limit mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to Star Wars. So, and if you have um, Game Pass and you have e you have your EA Play, it's the base EA Play membership. It's not EA Pro. But you have access to a ton. Look at that. Fallen Order is right on top. You have an access to a ton of games. Uh, let me just go EA Play. Uh, I know there's. it's kind of like Game Pass where it's different on different systems. But right off the top, Fallen Order. Oh, Anthem. Uh, Battlefront 1 and 2 are on here. I know for sure there's a whole bunch of the older games. Like for... 11 12 bucks whatever um it is you can go play some of the games we've talked about today and if you want to get some of the games that aren't on here because they may be locked in pro because or the ea whatever else they have star wars uh the humble bundle description for the 4th of july for may the 4th sale <laughs> is on right now 75 percent off it lasts until tomorrow kotor one and two Ten bucks, you can pick up a bunch of the Lego games. If you want to get a big, big bundle, uh, the Classic Collection has a lot of the Classic ones. The Jedi Collection has the Jedi Knight games. 
uh, X-Wing, and the Modern Collection has a lot of these. So that link is in the description. Again, I am an affiliate, so for full disclosure, all that and such. And it's on Steam, so you get your uh, Achievos, too, if you, you're you one of those people, which I am. Uh, I am Floor Hugger. You guys know me. You guys have seen me. I will stitch the rest of these together. There's what, four other ones. I'm surprised <laughs> this has held on so long. Thank you for working for once, OVS. Uh, well, next. Uh, right? I was going to say, we could say Hustle was right. All it took was an uninstall and a reinstall on it. I, and that did it. I think it was the one of the plugins I had. Because I had a plugin to like blur the backgrounds and stuff. And it was... Yeah, it kept I saying it was out of yeah. date, but I updated it yesterday, so mm. it was like, okay. Um, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. That's, this is a Star Wars episode. I, it was something we could have talked about forever, but at the same time, we would have been running over. Uh, next week, I'm just going to give you guys a spoiler of what next week is, because I know you guys will ask me this this weekend. We're going to talk about Resident Evil. Mainly Resident Evil Village, but we're going to dive into Resident Evil. Because I know I'll get tons of uh, messages this weekend have you played resident evil what did you think of big body bay haven't played it probably won't play it but i do want to talk about it might be spoilers i don't know so that's going to be next week's topic and then we don't know uh what we're going to do after that <laughs> we just took some suggestions uh like i said you can come into level one gaming's level one original click on the cogs in the machine it has a big uh thumbnail and scroll to the very bottom Leave us a little reply, and we'll read it on the show. Same can be said when you, you know, uh, if you're listening after the podcast. Leave a review, and we will read it on the show. Thank you guys for rocking with us. We are Level 1 Gaming. I'm the Floor Hugger. You can see me tomorrow at 2XP, uh, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. All that goodness. And, uh, Trevor, please serenade these beautiful people, because they want to hear you talk more than they want to hear me talk. No, I think they. I think, I think you're the star for sure. So no, uh, you're 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 definitely the star of level one gaming. So, uh, no. <laughs> no. Um, but now you can follow me uh, at Trevor Oz O S Z, uh, and yeah, I, I talk about random stuff at random times because that's just who I am. Uh, depending on what what I'm getting down to today, uh, <laughs> this week will be a, a weird week for me. Tomorrow I get my my second shot of vaccine Woohoo! so uh, i will probably be out of it for the next couple of days after tomorrow uh but, but yeah go uh go get go get your shots if you can uh it's, it's definitely definitely worth getting uh maybe we'll uh get to at least a little bit more normal um i don't think we'll be back to normal normal but We'll have at least a little bit of no more normalcy the more people get it. So, exactly. Um, so, but yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, thanks, Flames, for being in the chat yeah. uh, this whole time. Uh, thanks to Chakalaka, Pirate, uh, Hustle, uh, everybody that comes on through. We yep. really appreciate it. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll catch you next week. It's you guys next week. And uh, if you ever want to join the level one team, shoot me a DM. Our names are under our uh, little Commodore pets here. And uh, I appreciate it if you guys do. See you guys next week. Bye, guys. Level up, level up. Never lose, should have had better luck. Trying to see a check, I'm running up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Level up, level up. Tryna see a check, I'ma run it up Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough Never lose, shoulda had better luck I'ma wake him up from a slumber Money ain't nothing but a thing And the level ain't nothing but a number Life ain't nothing but a game Level up, level up Never lose, shoulda had better luck Tryna see a check, I'ma run it up yeah, I do a lot, still ain't I wanna ball. Waking up, myth that he gave me a chance, and I'm rolling the dice. I do it all. Living like I'm trying to go for the platinum trophy in life. Who can you call? Really nobody, so you should just follow me on your device. And know if she chilling with me, then it's bound to be chemical X and the sugar and spice. Game in the system, but game is the hobby. I'm probably cocky, but hottest wasabi. I mean, if it's beat, then you know where to find me. My dick is ready, and so is my body. You
You should be running and telling your posse and what's in the speakers and what's in your potty. And she trying to kick it, but this ain't karate. Just keep that shit down while I'm watching Tsunami. I ain't saying I'm a super nerd, but I told you when we got involved. My idea of a perfect date is a PlayStation and some alcohol. I was role playing on GTA. I'm a good guy, but I got it all. If the world should end, be the first to leave. But the last of us, acting naughty, dog. Level up, level up. Never lose, should've had better luck. Trying to see a check, I'm running up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Level up, level up. Trying to see a check, I'm running up. Yeah, I do a lot, still ain't done enough. Never lose, should've had better luck. I'ma wake him up from a slumber. Money ain't nothing but a thing.